You're tuned in to Knights Re-Air, presented by Dex Imaging, a proud sponsor of UCF Athletics. Dex Imaging is the nation's largest independent provider of office technology with a local touch. Dex Imaging, do business better. And in part by Tico People's Gas, delivering natural gas that helps you save energy. Visit peoplesgas.com. And this UCF football game, sponsored in part by Todd Minor Law. Involved in an accident? Get a former insurance company attorney on your side. Senior night at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, 21 Pirates honored. None more so than the quarterback, Shane Carden. Quite a story. Virtually unrecruited. Came in when Ruffin McNeil, the head coach, did and has had a prolific career. He's thrown more than 11,000 yards. And Justin Hardy, who this year leads the nation in catches per game, and no one in FBS history has more catches than the senior receiver from Vanceboro. Let's go inside the Pirate locker room now and listen to Ruffin McNeil as he Three talks to his squad. That's still enough. Grow man game. Grow man game. Make competitive plays. Do your job. Play the next play. Play as one pirate. One heartbeat. One breath. One spirit. One man. That is not what we do. That is who we are. We are pirates. Everybody got that? Yes, sir. One thing, one thing only. One, two, three. Hey! This has been the Nissan pregame rush. Just about set to kick off in the American UCF won the toss and they will take the football first. We'll give you an opportunity to see the rocket armed quarterback Justin Holman from Snellville, Georgia. He'll get an opportunity as Sam told you with healthier running backs as George O'Leary in his 11th season as head coach of the Knights, hoping to give them back to back conference championships for the first time in program history. Shane Carden, the senior from Houston, Texas, makes his final appearance at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, but if he could lead the Pirates to a victory tonight and another win in the bowl game, East Carolina would have back-to-back 10-win -back seasons for the first time. Warren Harvey gonna kick it off. Jordan Akins, former baseball player, coming back to college in football, is deep to receive for the Knights. But it will not be Aikens who gets it. It'll be Michael Easton. Easton, a linebacker by trade, who took one all the way back for a touchdown against SMU, will drive the pile across the 30-yard line. That's just Easton's second kickoff return of the year. The first one went for 96, and that one carried guys for a really long way. Here's the season summary for the Knights. Tough game against BYU that we called on a Thursday night. An inexplicable loss to UConn. The only game that UConn won in conference play, and the only reason UCF can't win this league outright. You'll see some impact players. Rashad Perriman, the wide receiver. And when UCF is on defense, Terrence Plummer is a straight warrior. Micah Reed gets a start at running back, and Holman's going to throw it for the first time, and he overshoots Rennell Hall. It'll be second down and 10. Quarterback is Justin Holman, a talented guy, but one that's been a little bit up and down at times. He has been, but he's been a lot better in the second half of the season. He's got a lot of NFL measurables, guys. He's six foot four, he's athletic, but this guy has serious arm talent. And because of that, they'll attempt route concepts and combinations you don't see very often in college football. That's how good his arm strength is. Now give it on the ground, it is Reed. Reed gets up across the 40 and gets a first down. And he's got a big time arm, but this offensive line in the run game, George O'Leary wants to run the football. That's what he's about. He's old school. They want to line up. They want to, sm they want to smash you and then let Holman play action off of it. So it always starts with the inside zone and, and maintaining the football and pounding it. And stopping the run has been a strong suit of the Pirate defense. The pass has given them some problems. It's a big defensive front. You'll see for East Carolina tonight. Holman pulls it down. Gets across the 45, up close to the 48-yard line. We talk about UCF's offensive line, the challenge they have facing them. They really got to watch this nose guard right here, 54. It's hard Terry to Warren, miss him. 353 pounds, <laughs> nope. and he outweighs UCF center Jason Ray by 70 pounds. He's the point of the Pirate defense. You see him right there. This is the matchup in the middle of the field. We should be watching run game and pass game. Reed has it. Williams was among the guys in the backfield, not necessarily on the tackle. I don't know if he weighs 353, but he weighs more than Blackbeard's last ship. Well, I'll take a look right in the middle here. 
sliding slant in this way, reading, and just winning a one-on-one -on -one matchup, just getting push and penetration oh. in the backfield. There's the big That's fella. not one-on-one. -on -one. That's one and a half <laughs> versus one. That's a big wrecking ball right there. Thanksgiving just last week, he's, he's every bit of 360, 370 right now. You know, defensive line coach Mark Yellick wasn't happy with the way Williams played against Tulsa and expected to see an inspired performance from him tonight. Complete the Hall Halls in East Carolina territory inside the 40. So the Knights convert on third down and the opening possession is turning into a nice drive. Pickup of 16. This is really where I think Justin Holman's been impressive in the last several weeks, guys. Third down. Understanding down and distance, managing drives, not always looking for the explosive player, the Sports Center highlight top 10 play, but just making good decisions, keeping these third downs manageable, and keeping this offense on the field. And a quick drop, quick completion to Akins. Short gain, it'll be second and you long. Brandon Williams on the tackle. Maurice, you mentioned Jordan Akins earlier. He was a wide receiver at the start of the year. Last couple of weeks, though, he's been playing tight end, and he's a tell. Great Every time too, he's in the game, they throw the football. They do not block when he's in the game. So that's certainly something East Carolina is going to be looking for. If 88 lines up anywhere, you're expecting pass. He's a former minor league outfielder, so maybe the block, the nuances of blocking in the run game, not quite there yet, but he's certainly got the size for it. Complete from Holman. He's got Josh Reese. Reese is inside the 25, and the Knights continue to march. And we talked about ECU being really good at stopping the run. That's why you're seeing some first down passes. If they can keep this up, keep this front off balance, and, and be able to throw the football. They got experienced playmakers on the outside. Holman's starting to come into his own. It's going to put ECU defense in a bind. All receivers to the left. Michael Reed. Starting short gain on first down. Williams on the stop. One thing about this East Carolina defense, guys, their inside linebackers are active. You're looking at Zeke Bigger, number seven, Brandon Williams, 24. These guys read, react, they find the football, they attack the football, and they take it to the ground. Bigger is wearing number seven tonight. Lamar Ivey usually wears that number. Strong safety, a senior who's not able to play because of a wrist injury. So Zeke traded in the 44 for the seven. One of the leading tacklers in the country, Rennell Hall, still on his feet. Dancing around, he had to go through a ton of Pirates and just made it back to the 25. Third down and long, Dave. A great run defense. When they run the inside, they run outside. you got to set the edge. Watch the outside of this play right up here. Watch the edge get set right away to take away the jet sweep on the outside. He doesn't let him get outside. Great job, great penetration in the middle. Everybody's where they're supposed to be. They do a good job of that run fit. Knights two of three on third down in this drive. Trying to convert for a third time. Holman fires right on the money and just flat dropped. That was Josh Reese. It got to his pads, and it comes in there with some serious revolutions. Josh Reese has good hands, guys. How did that not stick to him, Jesse? But this shows you the arm strength we talked about with Holman. Why? That is a laser. And that's all over 1-9 before he's ready for it. Now, it's a tight window, but on third downs, that's what you expect. And that's not on the quarterback. You've got to get that to your receiver as soon as possible. Get another pair of gloves or something. Help yourself out. Coming out, spinning it. Galihoo. Salut. Sean Moffitt from 43 yards out, and Moffitt is now three points away from time UCF record for points scored. And O'Leary applauding the opening drive, which results in a field goal, and the Knights looking for a conference title are up three. East Carolina got off to a terrific start, began six and one, only lost to South Carolina, and dropped a 70 spot on the Tar Heels. In the first college football playoff rankings, the Pirates were ranked 23rd, but then losses to Temple and Cincinnati knocked East Carolina out of the rankings. They won their last two as Justin Hardy set the FBS record for career receptions. And you're about to see Hardy in his final game at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium as East Carolina will get the ball for the first time. Coming up in a matter of moments, here is Shane Carden, senior from Houston, Texas. He's had a remarkable career during his time here in Greenville. Sean Galvin kick it off after the UCF field goal. Back to return it is Isaiah Jones. Jones 
is going to be stopped short of the 20. And as Carden comes out to start his final home game for East Carolina, he's quite a story. It appeared coming out of high school that he was on his way to Stephen F. Austin. Ruffin McNeil got the job here. B.J. Simmons, the former Texas Tech quarterback, had been working with Shane. Old Ruffin got a guy you might want to look at as you start to install that Texas Tech type offense that Cardin's gotten here and done a terrific job. And he's done a heck of a job. He's not the most talented guy in the country by any stretch, but always runs the right plays, get him in the, gets him in the right looks, understands where to go with the football. He's a nightmare to defend for defenses. Cardin, his first pass to the outside, and it's a little too high, and it was almost intercepted. He was looking for Cam Worthy. It'll be second down and 10. Now, here is Justin Hardy who has 98 catches on the year, leads the nation at nearly nine per game. He's had a great year, as Cardin has had a great career, but Hardy, like Cardin, also under-recruited. He appeared, he actually signed a national letter of intent to go to Fayetteville State before he got a chance at a higher level to play at East Carolina. Cardin completes the pass right over the middle to Bryce Williams, and it'll be a third down coming. And he's going to get plenty of balls thrown his way. He's so talented on the outside. You want to play man coverage on him. Cardin's going to look his way, and he's going to win most of those. And F FBS career leader in receptions, that's pretty amazing throughout his career. And, and despite that, guys, he was left off the Bolitnikov list, aggravated Ruffin McNeil, and gave Justin a little chip on his shoulder as Cardin fires quickly and underneath, and it'll be close to the first down. Depending on exactly where they spot it, Clayton gathers tackled Isaiah Jones almost immediately and they will give him the first down. So East Carolina picking up the tempo now first first down of the game they're going to crank it up try to get guys lined up UCF now defensively has to answer and get themselves lined up. And movement on the right side of the offensive line. False start number 65 of the offense five yard penalty first down. We talk a lot about UCF statistically, how good they are on defense. Guys, they're a bend-don't-break defense. They don't have a lot of superstar-type players, but they rush four guys. They keep seven in coverage. They keep the ball in front of them, don't give up explosive plays, and force you to drive the field to come away with points. Cardin going deep, taking a shot, and off the hands of the intended receiver, Jacoby Glenn out there on the coverage on Devon Grayson. One reason they don't give up a lot of explosive pass plays is this guy, Jacoby Glenn. Six picks on the year. He's out there on an island one-on-one. -on -one. That's a catch that East Carolina needs to come down with. Well, you get those opportunities. Great, but great defense, man. It was perfect. <laughs> Hit the hands when he's trying to catch it. He's not going to catch that very often. Just tip the cap, Palmer. Glenn, one. Take advantage. Second down and 15. And Five-yard penalty, moving him back, installing the drive, and Cardin makes it up, completing it, and there's the first catch of the night for Justin Hardy. He's not the fastest receiver in the country. He's extremely good at cutting. He does a lot of his dirty work over the middle of the field. They like to throw play action, try to get the linebackers and safety sucked up. He's got really good hands, and he can make things happen with the ball once he has it because of that cutting ability and his ability to run in the open field. Both of these guys will get an opportunity Show what they can do to the Pro Scouts at the Senior Bowl. Cardin firing quickly, getting rid of it. Hardy has it again, and some good open field running to get the first down, Jesse. With this bend don't break defense, they oftentimes play with two high safeties, so it's the middle of the field where you need to attack tonight, I think, if you're East Carolina. See, they got these safeties in the back, right here. And oftentimes, these guys are both playing deep. There's big holes in the middle of the field to attack the East Carolina. They'll keep it on the ground and get the first down the easy way with Breon Allen. The numbers, David, for UCF's defense uh, have been terrific. It's been awesome. And I think when you start talking about the other teams that they're ranked up with, they're with in the, the standings, it's not talent-based. It's just playing the good scheme. Tackling in open space and like Jesse just talked about not giving up those huge plays with keeping those safeties back deep And being okay with you giving five yards a pop and getting a lot of yards Got a peek at Tyson Summers the UCF defensive coordinator From the school of O'Leary 
And running backwards and hit for loss is Marquez Grayson. And UCF was all over that one as Jemias Pittman got in the backfield. There's a flag down. Number 69 of the defense. 15 yard penalty. Results in automatic down. A 15 yard penalty called on Thomas Niles negates the big play on defense. I was watching this live. Yeah, it was hard to see what happened with Niles. I think it might have been something very, very late in the play, but he was kind of trailing where everything happened. You know, he, he hit an offensive lineman, Taylor Hudson, the center, in the back way late. I think that's why he got called for the play. Watch Niles right here coming in on this hit just late. Plays over, gets a big shove, and that's just go. That start that gets the penalty. Especially when your boy Pittman just got a tackle for a loss and put him in a bad situation, then you do something boneheaded like that. Bonehead play cost him 15 yards. It would really put the Pirates in a hole instead. They're in night territory threatening and still moving. Another catch from Isaiah Jones. And this is what's so frustrating about this offense. If you want to play safety, Jesse, Cardinals just going to read the zone defense. They got receivers that are going to sit in the hole, and they're just, he is perfectly fine dinking and dunking all day. And they spread you out. These receivers are going to get the ball in space, yep. and you're going to have to tackle extremely well on the perimeter. Only the third run of the night, Breon Allen still on his feet. There is a flag that came flying in toward the line of scrimmage. Jacoby Glenn got Allen on the ground. Holding. Number 74 of the offense. Ten-yard penalty. Second down. The center, Taylor Hudson, called for the hole. East Carolina has had trouble with penalties this year. That has not been a problem in previous years under Ruffin McNeil. He actually brought officials into midseason to try to clean up some of that, but they've had games, the Temple game most notably, not only the five fumbles that cost them, but they had a dozen penalties in that game, and that one was hurtful. Here to get off the snap cleanly, but I don't see a flag. Harden throws it late and complete. Catch for Hardy, but really no yardage and third downs coming. It was a really good coverage by UCF. They tried to go play action and roll the pocket to see if they could sneak a backside post deep down the field, but UCF in their secondary stayed home, forced Cardin to have to check that football down, now setting up third and long. 11th play of the drive coming. Cardin has a lot of company, and he had to get rid of it quickly to Hardy. And the UCF defense was everywhere. Gerald Mamaya, Mamaya, pardon me, was in the backfield applying the pressure. And when you run a screen, the offensive line's supposed to let the defensive line come in, just not that quickly. I mean, it was a jailbreak right from the start. Watch the defensive line come in so quickly. Card didn't even have a chance. He had to hold up just a second longer. It was close to being pass interference on Plummer. And Worth Gregory. Mine East Carolina punter standing at his own 45. Worth trying to get that nice backspin on it. It was bobbled briefly, but hauled in safely by Josh Reese. And UCF had a field goal the first time they had it. They get it back for the second time tonight. Well, you got this a little bit to the right. You got it. You are so going to make the team. Addition Financial can't help you with your jump shot. But for home ownership, affordable financing, and savings accounts, count us in. Senior night, always very emotional. And Shane Carden playing his last home game. We ran into Shane's parents last night at dinner, and they were almost getting choked up just thinking about it. The other guys among the 21 Pirates honored here tonight, including... Running back Breon Allen, wide receiver Cam Worthy, who made a lot of big plays during their time here in Greenville. I'd like to go out with a victory tonight. And some movement on the front of the offensive line. Full Chavis start. Dickey. Number 79 in the offense. Pelly's half the distance to the goal line. First down. You've got to be alert if you're East Carolina on defense now. This is an area of the field that offensive coordinators like to take shots. They'd like to try to set up play action. We're counting on the fact we're playing man-to-man -man on the perimeter of the field. Just see if they can catch a sleep and throw one over your head. Number 28, William Stanback's in the game, and he has the ball, and he had come in the backfield, and Stanback 
got in, as Samantha told us, right at the top of the telecast. Stand back has missed a couple of games with the shoulder, but they going with the sophomore from Hempstead, New York tonight. Both he and Dontravius Wilson returning after missing the USF game. 16-0 victory for the Knights against an in-state foe that they do not like to acknowledge as a rival, and they took great satisfaction at him, kind of shutting out the Bulls at home for the first time. Holman out of his end zone, and East Carolina had a chance to get a pick. That was Maurice Falls. It's not a good decision by Justin Holman trying to throw this outside route into double coverage. Now, the, his arm strength was actually a benefit on that because Nobody on East Carolina's defense can catch that either. But you've got to be careful. Throwing from your own end zone, if you, if you don't have it, that football's got to go away out of bounds or check it down. UCF lucky they didn't have a turnover there. Holman's going to roll and fire high over the head of Josh Reese, and it'll be three and out for UCF. And a great defensive possession for ECU. You saw the first possession, they had success throwing the football. They took that away, took the run away. Now they're going to get great field position. you will love to the punter, too. How about the punter knocking him back in deep? Are you actually just a giving little, love a little, to don't, a don't punter? Get, don't get wow. crazy. Wow. Don't get crazy. Pin him deep, though. It helps the defense. Well, Caleb Houston's job is going to be to flip the field if he can for UCF. Instead, it's a high, short punt that Hardy fair catches oh. inside the 35-yard line. So extraordinary field position for the Pirates as they have it for the second time. If you are having any symptoms of chest pain or any symptoms that can correlate to a stroke, please come to the emergency department and let us take care of you. There is no safer place for your emergency than our emergency department. We will protect you like we protect ourselves. The quicker you get to the ER, the better your outcome is going to be. We've never been more ready to take care of you and your family for an emergency. Cancer has touched virtually everyone's lives, and the Lee Foundation has done remarkable work to help the families impacted. Justin Hardy working his way through the UCF defense and getting inside the 20, and Pirates take advantage of that short punt, and they're threatening to take the lead. That's, again, an example of his cutting ability, just finding a soft spot in the zone, giving Carden a good target. They've done that a few times throughout their career. 26 times they've hooked up for touchdowns. No active duo. There's more touchdown connections than those two guys. Carden has it batted into the air. And it was almost for a second as if Thomas Niles didn't think he should catch it. But he did. Plummer batted it into the air. Yeah, this is an area of the field UCF's been really good at all season long. Watch 41. Plummer comes on a delayed blitz. Not going to get home. He bats it down. But guys, throughout the season, 41% of the time, opponents have had possessions inside the red zone. That's the UCF's given up touchdowns only on 41% of the time. That's a key in being a bend, don't break defense, forcing field goals, not touchdowns. Carden complete. He's got Jimmy Williams, and Williams is inside the 10. Going to be a yard or two short of the first down, third down coming. And I think what you saw that last possession, too, is one of the things you have to do defensively against this offense. you got to get your hands up. You're not going to get to Carden all the time. He gets through the ball so fast. You better be willing to sit on the line of scrimmage sometimes, just jump up and try to tip it and make a play. It's frustrating. It's frustrating to play this kind of offense. Different personnel group coming in for the Pirates. Marquez Grayson is in at running back. They give it up the middle and getting close to the goal line. Did they give it to him? Grayson's in for a touchdown. He's got a rushing touchdown for the fourth time in his last five games, and the Pirates have the lead. Nice little zone play on the inside. Get a good push by your offensive line, and Grayson just able to find a crease through. Let's make sure he got in. Where's the football? When is that? Ooh. Oh, ball comes out, it looks like. He's, yeah, he's and it's it. not across the line of scrimmage. He's already down but, right now. But when does he recover? You mean the plane of the end zone, yeah. by the way? Yeah. yeah. So well, he falls fumbled. out now. He fumbles, and he's on it, and it's on the plane, yeah. and he recovers it, though. Well, that's interesting. They're going to have to take a look at that again. Yeah, that could be. Let's see here. He's Ruling not down yet. The ball previous out. play is the runner was able to get the ball across the goal line plane before his knee touching the ground. This play is now under further review. So obviously he fumbles it. And then when he regains it, I think it's it's in the end zone. So I think I think the play will stand. 
But I don't think his knee's down. No, he's up out. when the ball he's comes there. out. Now he's dead. He doesn't have it. It doesn't look like he has it yet. See, it's still moving around. Yeah, he now, he does. It. now he's got it, and he's across the plane. It's going to be a touchdown, but not yeah. for the reasons the officials on the exactly. field thought. But that's exactly. a tough one to see. Yeah. Ball basically bounced right back into Grayson's midsection. Yeah, that could have been a lot worse, obviously. No doubt. Grayson got lucky with that hop. And there's a really good example of special teams helping out your football team. We talked about the punt being down into UCF territory, defense forcing a three and out. You give the football back to Shane Carden, Justin Hardy and company deep in UCF territory, and they make it pay off. But Breon Allen was telling him a minute ago, I saw you fumble that thing. <laughs> <laughs> the referee's you, nice. you know you're about to, but it doesn't matter. I got it back. <laughs> yeah, right. I saw you fumble it. America's about to watch you fumble it. Coach <laughs> Marquez can say, still a touchdown. That's right, brother. And it's still going to be. We feel certain as John McDade, the referee, is consulting with the replay official, Michael Simcheski. Kind of one of the things we talked about in the opening, you know, I mean, for all the accolades Shane Carden gets and all the attention Justin Hardy gets in the After further video review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. And, and they should get those accolades. They have a lot of good players at wide receiver. They've got a lot of good running backs that come in and spell each other. Lots of depth, keeps them fresh, keeps them dangerous throughout the course of the game. No weary. A little displeased. Yeah, he wasn't happy with Summers, was he? No, no, he wasn't. Saying something to him. That'll happen. George, George will peel the paint off every now and then if just a little. things aren't going to his liking. Ooh. And the extra point is blocked. That'll make him happier. Yeah, so 6-3. Let's see who got the big mitt up there to swat that thing the other way. Knights in search of a share of the American Championship will take every point they can get. I believe that was Thomas Niles who got it and bounced right to UCF defender. No chance for a return. East Carolina up three. At Blaze Pizza, artisanal quality at crazy fast speed is what we're all about. Fresh dough made from scratch daily. Choose any toppings you like. Then it's just 180 seconds in our blazing hot oven for fast-fired perfection. Enjoy your Blaze favorites for delivery or carryout. Right now, we're offering delivery specials through our app or online, including a one-topping large pizza for just $10 or two two-topping large pizzas for $22. Download the Blaze Pizza app or visit us online at blazepizza.com. I would just say that perhaps in our final regular season Thursday night game, we wanted to give an early holiday gift to the people. <laughs> okay. People might be keeping score at home the number of times that they get the athletic trivia question correct. Hashtag you're welcome. <laughs> Warren Harvey kick it off. And the kickoff, perhaps a little frustration after <laughs> getting the extra point blocks. Warren just knocked that thing out of the end zone. UCF will get it on the 25. So since we have told you how easy the answer is, we'll give it to you now. Justin Hardy, the FBS all-time leader for receptions. Who did he pass? Ryan Broyles of Oklahoma, who had 349 records. Go, records go down fast these days, don't they? Well, especially with all the passing. Well, I'm thinking also about like Melvin Gordon going off for 400 yards and literally like the next week, the next day, yeah. he run goes off for Oklahoma. No. I mean, these days with offensive football spread offense up tempo, man, you better if you're going to set a record, you better get way out ahead. You see all of those records set since 2000 is stand back. Struggles forward for a couple. Brandon Williams on the stop. Well, it shows you how much the game's changed. You know, like Bo Wallace passing all of, you know, Eli's records. I mean, that doesn't, they don't feel like the same, obviously, type of quarterbacks, but the spread offenses and the up tempo, you're right. It's so many more plays than you used to play. Well, what do you attribute then, say, for instance, Melvin Gordon in a somewhat more conventional attack having that, those kind of rushing numbers? This play. Completion to Reese is up close to the first down. Well, with the spread and everybody getting more spread, and you got a style of Wisconsin that stays thick, it stays hit you in the mouth, and stays committed to the run game. It's uh, it shows you that it pays off for them. And look, they've had a back go over a thousand yards, ten straight seasons. That's yeah. the perfect offense for that ground and pound and playing in the Big Ten. Third and one. They don't need to rush for 400 yards. O'Leary would sell for rushing for one here. Holman, that's 
stood up. There's flag. a flag coming in. Let's see what the flag is. Holman got close to the first down. Well, you're going to run right at Terry Williams in there, huh? <laughs> I don't recommend that all day. Personal foul, grasping the face mask. Number seven of the defense, 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. Zeke Bigger called for the face mask penalty. He's 10th in the country in tackles, nearly 11 per game. So I was telling you guys earlier, number 88, Jordan Aikens, the tight end for UCF. He's back in the game now. And again, watching all the film, when this guy's in the game, they throw the football. And they'll line him up at tight end, kind of off in the wing. But it's a tell, and it's going to be interesting to see if he's ready for that. Wow, break it. Got to break tendency sometimes. And Stanback breaks into the secondary. He gets inside the 30. Williams Stanback finally dragged down by Dietrich Allen. George has been watching tape too, buddy. <laughs> Great got play a, call got by a Charlie scout. Taft, no doubt. A little outside zone read. Running behind a wide receiver that's got a block on the perimeter. Keep the defense on their heels. Like, love the play call. He actually made a good block too. Look at, look at Aikens get the block, Jess. That's, yeah, it's okay. Kind of getting his way. He's yeah. a receiver. That's, no, that's I mean, good. It looks it's a stock block. That's why it's he the right, 240 pounds. It's the right yeah. run to call then. 23 yard run. Now they'll give it on the jet sweep to Hall. Hall trying to bounce to the outside. Slips a couple of tackles and picks up about two. Well, this is something they always do. They'll get Rennell Hall jet sweeps, reverses. They line him up in the backfield against USF and gave him handoffs because he's dynamic. It's very hard to tackle, so they have to find creative ways to get number six touches. He got his first touchdown against USF of the season. He had two in the Fiesta Bowl victory against Baylor last year, so he hasn't found the end zone quite as often as you would anticipate, but he's healthier now, missed three games of injury this year. Holman sacked. Fred Presley in there. Thank you very much. And there hasn't been much pressure. No pass rush this whole game for ECU. It's a great job. Somebody winning a one-on-one -on -one battle, which you need to do. You're going to see it right here. Watch them do a great job of getting upfield, coming right inside, splitting two defenders, and making the play. So now a big third down for Justin Holman. You don't want to force it. This is third and long. If it's not there, check it down. Give your field goal kicker a chance. Now run the screen. Stand back. Splits defenders and stand back down close to the 20. That will make the field goal much more manageable. And that's why it's good to have him back. He's so physical. I mean, we saw him last year. Remember, he made Sports Center top 10 by running people over. And he's fast and physical. When you get him in the open field like that, it's hard to bring him down with an arm tackle. That should have been a one yard gain. He does a great job turning that into a 10 yard game and make this uh, field goal more manageable. Moffitt has been near automatic inside the 40, hitting eight out of nine this season. He's already made one from 42. This one is going to be from 38 yards out. Kick on the way. Scraped a wow. little bit of that gold paint off the right upright, but he got it through there. And after the missed extra point by East Carolina, we're tied. With a little kiss. Yes. <laughs> Hashtag members bounce. <laughs> As the visitor. Lots of lift underneath that kick. That's hard to do, man. No doubt. I'll tell you what, with the missed extra point earlier by East Carolina now, tie game. I'll tell you, what, that, that, you know what's even harder to do? It's hard for to, to make a kick when Reese Davis puts the hex of automatic on you. <laughs> because it's we've seen some we've seen some people go down. Maguayo? That's, that's just that's just part of the fun, David, of Thursday night football. And we've had plenty of fun on this crew all season long. You ready? Hit it. Ah! Jesse Palmer, David Pollock in the mayhem. I have no idea what you just said. Hey, just a bit outside. Look at Palmer. The, the white Nikes. We, we appreciate that from the fashion perspective. Let's see something. Pollock actually made one of those long field goals. What, from like 32 Pollock? Is that what it was? It was from 40. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, it's okay. Isaiah Jones out there on the stop. I, I tell you what, it's not just the people that you see and hear on the air that makes this crew such a team. Great people to work with. 
Hey, Greg Schwartz, who leads our technical operations pretty much since the inception of Thursday Night Football. Brian Shannon, they call him grumpy. He does the audio, but he's always he's always got a smile most of the time. We got great camera guys everywhere from Scott Trigger Caldwell, Wade Hewitt, Andre's down there, Josh and Rico works up in the booth every week and then mans the camera. We got a terrific team on Thursday night. We're grateful to be a part of it and all the work they do to make this fun for us. It's all led by our fearless producer, Josh Hoffman, and our director, Chris Jeff Kelly. Evers, who have great hands, by the way. We've been throwing every Wednesday with a little spin session. We come out early, get together as a team, throw some rounds. When you said Jeff Evers, I thought you were going to talk about the pick six he had on you there. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Unsanctioned Ooh, low turkey blow, bowl. Low blow. Week 15. Little swing pass out there and picking up the first down on the swing to the running back Chris Hairston. Should have known better than to test Evers Island in a clutch situation. <laughs> the game on the line nonetheless. <laughs> Winding down the final seconds of the first quarter. We just hope you guys at home have had as much fun on Thursday nights as we have. If the Pirates get off another snap here before the first quarter expires, they choose not to. So we played one at Dowdy Ficklin in Greenville, North Carolina, all tied at six for UCF. It's been a couple of field goals. East Carolina touchdown and a missed extra point. Second quarter coming in the American. Guess what I just did? I got a night pass. Night pass? Yeah, ePass is now offering night fans UCF branded toll stickers. See for yourself my windshield now sports night black and gold. They'll certainly see you coming, but does night pass work on all toll roads in Florida? Yes, it's accepted on all toll roads in Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina. Go night pass. It's how nights travel. Score big and save more with night pass. Go to getnightpass.com. Getnightpass.com. Hey, night fans. What's on your windshield? UCF and ECU all tied up at six here from Greenville. Now we know UCF has a lot to play for tonight, trying to get a share of the conference title. But I noticed on this sideline, maybe a little extra motivated. Guys communicating a lot more. And that's because something is missing, Reese. There are no benches on this sideline. I've never seen anything quite like it. I don't know if it was strategic or they just left them at home. But there aren't enough seats for everybody, and now everybody's got to get up and communicate with each other. Well, Sam, as East Carolina completes the pass, I had no idea that a road football game was BYOB. Bring your own bench. Yeah. Apparently neither did George O'Leary. <laughs> He's been in the business a long time. <laughs> I'm assuming that that wasn't his mistake. There's a catch by Devon Grayson. As East Carolina moves it out to its own 44. <laughs> There are a few benches over here on our side, on the East Carolina sideline. Another quick completion, and a slip tackle, and Cam Worthy's racing down the sidelines, and finally hauled out by Clayton Gathers. There is a flag now. But I'll tell you what, we're seeing more of the same. Short passes, broken tackles, receivers making plays in the open field. UCF's going to have to start tackling Pass these guys. Number seven of the offense. 15-yard penalty, first down. An offensive pass interference called on Isaiah Jones. Well, Isaiah Jones is a guy he can't really understand why, but he's going to run downfield. You see him outside. He can't block before the yeah, catch. That's and the it, problem. It, it, exactly it. It wasn't a designed pick play. He just ran into the cornerback, made contact. That's a good call by this officiating crew. He <laughs> just has to wait till the ball gets to the receiver first before he can make contact with the DB. Timing just a hair off, but the intention was good from Jones. It does negate a 31-yard gain. Harden going to try to get some of it back himself. Football's loose on the ground. He just spit it out, and it's recovered by UCF. This is a wrinkle that East Carolina likes to do, that they'll run Carden every now so often. Normally, it's only on third down and deep in the red zone. Here, it's out in the field. You see Tyson Summers, defensive coordinator for UCF, all fired up. He's just kind of going to the ground. The football just slips out. Troy Gray was there to get it. You wanted to give Luke Adams, who was on the tackle, credit for it. But really, he didn't have much to do with knocking the ball loose. Shane just sort of 
I just sort of let the thing squirt out of there. Jesse, that might be a wrinkle they might not use again. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> no doubt. Need better ball security, and now that costly mistake you have. The big penalty puts you back deep in your own territory. Then you turn it over. Now Justin Holman and UCF back in business on your side of the field. Remember, East Carolina has got the ball in the UCF 31. Now UCF gets it on the 41. Another flag flies in as Holman was trying to get it to Josh Reese. Well, Reese, you talked about it. ECU being the, one of the most penalized teams in the country. And then holding strong tonight, trying to, trying to maintain that reputation. Best interference. Number 28, the defense. Penalty results in an automatic first down. Josh Hawkins, the cornerback for East Carolina, is a guy that opposing teams take shots on. They, they try to pick on him. Teams have had success throwing the ball deep. You see right there in a first down play, a little double move by the wide receiver, Josh Reese, on the outside of the field. They'll get the completion, but they get the penalty. It sets them up inside the 30. We haven't played 16 minutes yet, and the Pirates already have five penalties for 59 yards. That one puts the ball down at the 26. First and 10 for UCF. East Carolina also just received a sideline warning from this officiating crew to the ground and slipping as he was trying to get it upfield with Stanback. And he had an opportunity to have a pretty good gain on that if he could have kept his feet. Your boy Atkins blocking again, Jesse. Yeah, tendency breakers, brother. Late in the season, got to do it. You know, one receiver we haven't seen a lot of, we haven't called his name yet. Rashad Perryman, number 11, who's easily their best wide receiver. He's a guy that's going to play on Sundays, and I'm not sure if, if, if he's a little nicked up, if he's injured, but he hasn't gotten a lot of field time so far. 6'3", 215 pounds. He's been a big weapon for Justin Holman this year. He's caught a pass in 29 straight games and a touchdown in his last six. Holman looking to his left, pulls it down. Holman's still on his feet. He took a big hit from Bigger. Stopped short of the first down, third down and shortcoming. And I love this by Justin Holm, and this is something I think he can do more. We talked about his athleticism for a guy that's 6'4. If the first read's not there, second read's not there, take off now. Get positive yards, keep these third downs manageable. What about sliding? 6'4, 213. Might need to finish that with the slide, though. There's your boy. Yeah, back in. yeah it's a good time to bring him in here, too. Third and short. If he's isolated one on one, he's right now matched up with Josh Hawkins, number 28 again. That's the guys, teams that like to pick on. This could be a shot play. Trying to get the first down with his feet until the swamp monster got him, Terry Williams. And he is a monster. Remember, this guy's 353 pounds listed, probably Ish. closer to 370. Watch the quickness on this play. He's going to be lined up right over the center. We talked about this matchup with the ball game. This is a quick roll. This is a hard play. Here he is right here, big boy. Oh. No, he's right there in the middle. Watch the quickness. Getting to the outside right away. Look at him run down Holman, who just talked about his athleticism. It's a few biscuits shy of 400 making that play. Sean Moffitt puts the foot to one, and it is no good. It is not automatic. Said almost from a certain distance. Now Moffitt have a chance to become UCF's all-time leading scorer with his Next made field goal, but that one couldn't find the home in their favor. College football playoff rankings brought to you by AT&T. Not only the rankings, but the best win for each team. We'll take another look at that shortly as Carden fires it and it's intercepted. Terrence Plummer has it off the deflection. Plummer inside the 30, Plummer inside the 20 before he's finally caught from behind by Justin Hardy. And UCF gets it right back. You do not see this very often. Justin Hardy dropping a pass. And we talked about a lot of the work he does over the middle of the field. Here's a slow developing play action to the outside on the fake handoff. Carden gets a chance to get through his progression, wants to go deep. It's not there. Oh, it was tipped. tipped it yeah. was deflected by Oz uh, no, it was Ozer Wrights Ozer Wrights on the outside. Now and Terrence Plummer. Plummer with really good ball skills at the middle linebacker position. And he's always making tackles. He's always right in the middle of everything making a big play for this defense. We've seen a couple of big plays by this D. Two straight turnovers on back-to-back -back possessions. At Wendy's, we got you with open drive throughs and delivery. So get a biggie bag loaded with a bacon double stack and all this for just five bucks. It's a big deal at a small price. Drive through Wendy's or get one delivered today. 
consecutive plays for Shane Carden of East Carolina consecutive turnovers this one resulting in UCF having it on the 16 of the Pirates and stand back finding nowhere to go yeah, this offensive line they had their hands full dealing with this big physical front from East Carolina they've had their hands full all year guys they've had no consistency nine different starting lineups throughout the season because of injuries and other issues and it's affected their continuity with respect to run blocking pass protection right now that they're in a battle and they've got to do a better job getting push up front stand back up one and this is one after getting two straight turnovers we want to turn this into a touchdown they had to kick a couple of field goals and missed one Holman fires complete still on his feet is Reese had a drop earlier and he'll be a couple of yards short of the first down. And this is their fourth possession inside the 30. So they, they got to start cashing in down here and not kicking field goals. It's, they've done a great job statistically moving the football. Missed a field goal. Otherwise, they'd be sitting pretty, but they got to punch this in for seven right here. Another third short. They just had one that got stuffed on their last possession. Harriman in motion now settles behind Hall. On the roll, Perriman by himself, but flags come and fly in. Will we see an offensive pass interference call? As Perriman looks like roughing was the passer. wide open. On well, the backside too, Reese. It looks like there's two of them, there? Yeah, there is. There's one back in the backfield at the 16. It was the receiver Rennell, Rennell Hall, number six. Yep. That was outside on the perimeter. It was going to one of these design pick plays. Of course, everybody remembers the finish to Florida There's State. There's a foul Notre by each Dame. team during the play. Pass interference, number six, excuse me. Pass interference, number six of the offense. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number nine of the defense. These fouls offset. Replay third down. Godre Hooker called for the roughing the passer, and that turns out to be a costly one. You could have set him back and had him in a third and long. Here's the pass interference. You're going to see Perryman right in motion, there. but watch number six push up, and he's kind of engaged with the cornerback, Josh Hawkins. It's a good call by the referee. And then this one in the mid zone. You just, I mean, you can't do this, man. You know they're protecting quarterbacks. You can bump into him at the end, but you can't shove him off his feet. So after all of that, we'll just have a do over. They'll keep it on the ground. Stand back, we'll get it down to the five, and it's a first and goal for UCF. Good strong running by Williams stand back inside. And, and they've got four big physical running backs they like to use throughout the course of the game. We talked about the inconsistencies they've had up front. It's important these guys find the hidden yardage. Yeah. Two, three, four yard gains and just get what they can get. They've also had inconsistencies at running back. The guys dinged up too, so they're trying to find that guy to ride to that workhorse. Back to stand back, stand back. A lot of company and another flag. We've had a lot of those. Well, hands to the face. I think it might be on the ECU again. Oh, good. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness, hands to the face. Number 93, the defense. Kelly's half the distance of the goal line. Automatic first touchdown. down. Looks like Justin Tukes, the tight end, was in there blocking, and you could see his head getting thrown backwards. It's Krishan Rose, who's Called for the penalty. Okay, right here. Watch his, watch his head get jerked back. See, his, the hand was all up in his face. Yeah. Not once, but twice. It's an easy call for the ref to make. Well, the sixth enforced penalty. Gets ECU back to first and goal. Back to stand back. Reaching for the goal line, and he scores. Touchdown, UCF. There's a great example of stand back in that power running. He's got Zeke Bigger, number seven, draped all over, just kind of drags him into the end zone. Watch this, he gets wrapped up behind. He's able to kind of extend that football across the plane before his knee touches. That's a tackle that Bigger needs to make before the end zone. The only question is the right elbow for me. His right elbow's down <laughs> while he starts to stretch out, and I couldn't tell exactly where that right elbow, where the ball was. It's close, they need to look at that. He had a replay booth, watches every play. Moffitt puts through the extra point. They didn't stop it. They felt Stanback got in, so Stanback pays off the interception by Terrence Plummer. And the Golden Knights, after being forced into field goal attempts three times, finally get one in. I think the elbow was down, but the ball 
a pebble with the ball. Pollock pebbling into the end zone. And the kick, the extra point, and Plummer celebrates. Pacifico is brewed for those who follow their own path. That's Living Life Anchors Up. Oh, what a glorious sight that is. And Bee's Barbecue, a Greenville landmark since the late 70s. Just two choices on the menu, pork or chicken. They cook six pigs a day, and when that is gone, it's gone, but that's it. <laughs> but you got there in time today. I, I did. You know, I got in line early, waited my turn, and it was key. The, the key about North Carolina barbecue is the vinegar-based sauce. They put some chilies in there. It really gives that pulled pork its, its kick, its edge. It was pretty good, I'm not going to lie. Reese, we had the similar experience for lunch, didn't we? <laughs> it, was, it was not quite the esoteric experience that, uh, that Palmer had. David and I opted for the burrito bowl at a very popular chain <laughs> every week. Automatic. I, I know where you guys are for lunch every Thursday. Isaiah uh, Jones downs as we check in with Scott Van Pelt. Vinegar-based sauce sometimes, Scotty, will get you all confused. I, I prefer, I like the vinegar-based sauce. I like something a little thicker, a little heartier most of the time. A little heartier effort on offense from East Carolina is what they like. Consecutive turnovers on the previous two plays, but a quick completion from Shane Carden out to Devon Grayson. So it's important East Carolina gets their mojo back and their rhythm back because of what you just mentioned. Two straight turnovers now, one on a fumble by Card, the second one he tries to force into traffic, gets picked. So easy completions now, try to get this rhythm going. And it, and it hadn't even been that either. It's also penalties left and right by this. Remember that offensive pass interference backed him up, and then the pick of play later, hands to the face on defense. Defensive uh, roughing the passer. A lot of self-inflicted wounds by ECU early. Already six penalties for 62 yards, approaching their season average, which Hasn't been great to begin with. To the incomplete pass. Pirates need a yard to stay on the field, and they're not going to get it. Thomas Niles was in the backfield. Demetrius Anderson helped him out. And there was nowhere to run for Marquez Grayson. Yeah, it's the point of attack where they get beat. And it's exactly what you said, Reese. It's Thomas Niles here. It's good down right in here. Just on the outside, just crashing. Nobody blocks him. Well, I mean, you run in the zone read. You got to keep it no, if you're a quarterback. Yeah, then. Yeah, I mean, if that's the guy you're reading and he's crashing in, you got to pull that. No respect for Cardin's wheels. We've already seen him run it once and he fumbled. I'd make him run it all day. I'd take the I'd take the dive too. Make sure he takes away the good running back. Worth Gregory will punt it and flags fly. It'll be another penalty against the Pirates. Ball start. Number 35 of the kicking team. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. Ruffin McNeil seeing his team really hurt themselves. As you hear one of the Pirates saying, let's get ourselves together. Imagine that's exactly what Ruffin's thinking as well. Gregory backed up five yards inside his own 15. Josh Reese catching it on the run with some room. Reese across the 45, he got face masks. There's going to be another penalty. Wow. And it's going to be a big one. They just cannot get out of their own way right now. Self-inflicted wounds with the turnovers and the penalties have made field position for UCF so good all night. Deion Pratt is the guy who got the face mask. The first problem with this play, Reese, is, that, is that the punt, punt was yeah. a line drive, and it just and the coverage unit didn't have enough time to get downfield and cover it properly. During the return, personal foul, grasping the face mask. Number one of the kicking team, 50 on penalty, automatic first down. 
Yeah, there, there's a smattering no, of booze, but I have no idea why. And, that was and, an obvious face mask. And, and Pratt was showing his buddy he was grabbing his shoulder. No, 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 he grabbed his, he grabbed his head. He was looking through his ear hole, buddy. So if you're UCF, you've got to, you've got to make them pay for this. I mean, if they're going to have the penalties and they're going to have the turnovers, you've got to capitalize, turn those into sevens. We know East Carolina is an explosive offense. You just don't want them hanging around. So it's imperative right now. Justin Holman drive his team down back into the end. Starting this drive inside the 40 of East Carolina. Justin Holman fires complete. Rennell Hall. Another, another flag. They may get him for another face mask. I mean, Zeke Bigger and Zeke a bunch Bigger. of guys are, you know, he's looking around with disbelief. Foul, grasping the face mask. Face mask. Number seven of the defense. 15 yard penalty. Automatic penalty. I mean, I mean, we see refs get, you know, flag happy, but there's nothing to defend. I mean, this is happening over and over. That's a face mask. Yeah. You, you got to call it. I mean, no doubt. None yeah. of these penalties we're looking at were going as that, that was a bad call. These are all great calls by the refs. So what about the fundamentals, though, of coming in for a tackle in the open field and trying to avoid Stop that? Stop tackling the head. That'd be a great start. I mean, go lower your shoulder and wrap up and don't, don't get your head, hands around the head. Back to the ground. Stand back is tackled without the aid of using a face mask by Fred Presley. Nine penalties for almost 100 yards, and we're not yet halfway through the second quarter. Not what Ruffin McNeil had in mind on senior night here at Dowdy Ficklin as UCF has a one touchdown lead and threatening to get more. Stand back. Finding a little room and working his way down to the 10. The last couple third downs we saw, we saw UCF try to move the pocket. They tried to get Justin Holman outside to his right, throwing the football. We're going to see what Charlie Taft, their offensive play caller, has dialed up here for a critical third down. Holman, stand back, no chance. Maurice Falls was out there to knock down Stanback, and UCF will have to try and another Holman, field goal. And Holman's still developing and still growing. He's, he's a one-read quarterback a lot of times. I mean, he, he looks, it's not there. He wants to get rid of it fast. He had a guy right over the middle of the field. You want him to work through his progressions more, but he's still young and still learning. He's probably getting an earful right there. That's his quarterback coach, Danny Barrett, just telling him, hey, you got Josh Reese on the spot route. That's your first read. You had time. Moffitt. Knocks through the 30-yarder, and he becomes UCF's all-time scoring leader. Knocking through the field goal, and it is 16-6. And East Carolina is lucky it's not worse. Six now, UCF has the lead on East Carolina, and this is a very fortunate thing for East Carolina that the lead's not bigger given the way they've tried to self-destruct. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. We've seen all the miscues with penalties and the turnovers. Good news for them, they have an explosive offense. They're one play away, throwing or running to get back in the end zone, so they have to feel pretty fortunate. They're only down, what is it, 10 right now? With all those problems. Cardi. Fires complete. That's Cam Worthy on the reception. And Card's done a great job taking care of the football all year long. He's done a pretty good job of it. He's had a couple turnovers tonight. That's cost him the interception and the fumble. He's just got to get back to making plays. Maybe pick this tempo up a little bit. That's when they're at their best and they can play fast. Back to the ground. 
Anthony Scott. That, that's the key to playing bend don't break defense too. You got to make the opponent one dimension. And right now, UCF's done a good job up front. They're only playing with four down linemen. They're not blitzing a lot of guys, but Thomas Niles, Terrence Plummer, and these players in the front seven are winning their one-on-one -on -one battles. They're keeping the run game, the short gains, and they're forcing Cardin to have to throw the ball downfield, making them, making it obvious, predictable. Knight defense is done. Good job, Knight. The tackle around the head, although no face mask, I don't see a flag, and that's what the reaction from the crowd was as Breon Allen is dragged down. Well, and another thing about this front four, Jesse, you talk about too, this also ECU offense, they run the ball well, almost 200 yards a game. And usually make some big plays, and you see right here the tackle, that's definitely the, either the flowing locks that he tackled or the back of the helmet. Third down and eight. Harden sacked. They are dominating up front at the moment. Demetrius Anderson. He put, he put his guy on skates, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, one thing about East Carolina, when you watch the film, they are not a good pass blocking unit. You're going to see just right up front, walk number 94, Anderson. And that's just too easy. I mean, they got Breon Allen out of the backfield running a post down the middle of the field. They've got a shot at potentially a touchdown, and Card never has a chance. Can't block Mr. Anderson. No, another punch for East Carolina. Worth Gregory. A little more height this time as Josh Reese gets it, makes the first guy miss. Reese across the 50. There's a flag coming back, likely for an illegal block. O'Leary <laughs> exhorting his special teams unit. Raising the hands might just call attention to yourself. It's always the dead giveaway. Yeah, yeah. What me? Yeah, I didn't do it. I really didn't hit him in the back. Now they're talking it over for a while now. Here's John McDade. Maybe he's going to listen. He's going to listen to the hands. I didn't do it. <laughs> I think there's two flags. Oh, we've got though. a couple of flags. There's one back in the line of scrimmage. Imagine that. Oh, Another flag? No way. Uh, TCU could do ECU, I mean, could do a good job. Maybe they'll have two on this one. There are two fouls on the receiving team. Yep. During the return, holding. Number 37, this penalty is declined. During the kick, holding. Number 17, this penalty is accepted. 10-yard penalty, first down. Ruffin's happy. He's like, thank God. It's not on us, boys. When he heard two penalties, he was thinking, seriously, <laughs> again? This time, both of them went against UCF. Knights with a 10-point lead, 4.07 to play in the first half. This isn't just a beer. It's a lager. A medium-bodied, amber-colored, one-of-a-kind beer. Made from those bold enough to brew it for those bold enough to drink it. Tap into your inner eagle. Yingling traditional lager. Spread your wings. This fella right here is their singing living on a prayer. He is a candidate for the not top 10 already. Uh, he's going to get it right here. He's, got, he's got passion, though. He's got to get it. There you go. <laughs> Poor girl next to him. <laughs> he's having a good time trying to. Will the Pirates do a little more positive action as Holman unleashes that big arm for Perriman, and he's got it. This is why Brashad Perryman is going to play on Sundays. He's got a tremendous catch radius. He's got speed. He can climb up on a corner, put his foot in the ground, and get the post. And at six foot three, elevate. He actually missed time to yeah, jump. Yeah, hang time though. Yeah, and still able to come down with that catch in traffic. But you see the big body just blocking the way. And Hawkins look, couldn't even get in the way because his body, he's so big. But there's the key, Hawkins, number 28. That's the guy that other teams like to take shots on. Picked up 45 on Hawkins that time. Now stand back to the ground and nothing doing. Fred Presley's had a good first half. He was in on the tackle along with 
for Sean Rose. I think so far in this first half, guys, offensive coordinator Charlie Taft's done a good job with the play calling. We talked about tendency breaking. You yep. got your receiver, now a tight end Jordan Aikens in the game, and you're running the football, but also play action on first down. Down in distances where the defense is expecting run, throwing it, coming up with positive plays. Second down and nine as we head toward the three-minute mark. Holman, Perriman, Perriman inside the 10. Perriman dragging his way down to the one-yard line. It'll be first and goal for UCF. And that's an advantage when you have a quarterback that can throw it as hard as Holman can because you get the football to your player in space very early before the defense has a chance to react. And now he has a chance to make something positive happen sooner than most other receivers would because they don't play with quarterbacks that can throw it as well. A lot of big guys in front of Stanback, and he'll find his way into the end zone for the touchdown. And the Knights are trying to spoil senior night for the Pirates, about to go up 23-6 if the extra point is successful. Well, the Knights are playing like the conference championships on the line. Yes, they are. A sense of urgency. Right they behind Toy and Wilson, too. Yeah. Their best offensive line in number 72. But they've played smarter so far in this first half, and they've executed better. Moffitt puts it through. And Perriman accounts for 68 of the 70 yards on that drive, and East Carolina finds itself down 23-6. Now, this is not unusual. This is going to be the fifth time that the Pirates have trailed at halftime this year. But they've still been able to put together an 8-3 and three record. As Holman got it started by finding Rashad Perry. Yeah, it was a nice job. He had to manipulate and kind of move inside the pocket a little bit. He was still able to get the football out on time, though, and he found the one-on-one -on -one matchup outside. Perriman rewarded him for his decision. This is a guy that I think needs to get more touches and more looks as the game's gone on. You see, very, very explosive. Came into the game already averaging 21 yards per catch. He's a definition of a big play receiver, and he's been big for Justin Holman all season. Well, especially, remember, Horton's out, tore his ACL, so he's out. So he, use your best playmaker on the outside. You're down one weapon. A great job, but Holman taking advantage of it deep, short, running a little bit, and he's doing a little bit of all of it tonight. David referenced J.J. Wharton, who tore his ACL game against SMU. A terrific season going for the Knights. Jones will take a knee in the end zone. And with 2.39 to play in the half, East Carolina will try to generate a little late half momentum and get a little bit closer as they trail by 17 here at home. See Rashad Perriman, who was instrumental on that drive. J.J. Uh, Wharton. Remember this catch last year against Temple, as good as you will see, and it proved to be so important. The Knights were on their way to a championship in the American and ultimately the Fiesta Bowl. Here's the play on which he was hurt against SMU. But three series later, he comes back in and catches the touchdown pass. He runs pass. a go route, runs by the corner, and takes it to the crib. Without an ACL. He played the rest of that game as Carden fires it to get rid of it. Out of bounds late. It'll be second down and 10. And then J.J. sent a note to the fans. It was basically a note of apology yeah. for getting hurt. And man, oh, man, he's been instrumental in the great success that George O'Leary has had in Orlando for the last few years, particularly the last two, and an opportunity tonight to win a share of the conference championship. Carden. Down he goes again. He took a big hit to do it. Demetrius Anderson. And Jesse just talked about the offensive line not being great in pass protection. There's no blitz. There's no secret. It's four defensive linemen versus four offensive linemen. And right now, look up front. They're not winning. You know what? Coverage sack, too. Yeah. And the secondary doing a great job locking up. There's nowhere for Carden to go with the football. Had to hold on to it. Now setting up third and East Carolina. We give Miles Pace some credit on that sack, too. He had him around the legs before Anderson came in and delivered the big shot. Third down in 14. Carden to the outside. Jones catches it. Jones trying to get the first down. They're going to mark him short. DJ Killings on the stop. Now the question is, it's fourth down. You're going to leave the offense on the field? 
And spin that wheel of fortune is rough in McNeil. Well, they don't get it here. UCF could apply the knockout blow before halftime, assuming they go ahead and snap the ball and attempt to get this. Maybe they just want to try to keep UCF from using the timeout to conserve time. And finally, East Carolina calls the timeout to make sure that's what they want to do. Ball is spotted just across their own 34. They got to get to the 35. I was just going to say how important it was for East Carolina to have to kind of finish this half. I mean, if they could go down the field, if they could convert this somehow, go down, get some points, they're going to get the ball back at first in the second half, but obviously now faced with a very, very difficult decision. Well, but first of all, what, what would, David, I'll let you start. What would you do here? Would you? I, I think I, I would punt it. This is why. Look at the swarm of the UCF defense all night. Did a great job getting pressure, stopping the run, which is an important part of this offense, and then getting pressure with just four guys. So. You haven't ran it great. You haven't thrown it that great. I don't think I'd be in a position where I feel no, like and, I could get it. And I agree because, again, you're going to get the football back first in the second half. You have an opportunity to climb back in this game very easily. They're going to roll the at. dice, and they're going to go. They're in your own 30. Yeah. 106 to go. And Ruffin McNeil decides to gamble on fourth and one. And they got the first down, Marquez Grayson. Perfect call, absolutely, 100%. You know, sometimes you, you have to take a big chance to give your team a little spark. UCS playing for the championship, ECU's playing for pride. Well, you got to hurry now. Faster. Yeah, so yeah. Time, time's of the essence. You got one time out in your back pocket. You got to get lined up. You got to get your personnel situated. You got to go. A little reverse. UCF just eats it up. Jimmy Williams. Miles Pace making his second play on this series of downs. Yeah, it yeah, was a great job with his eyes, just, just kind of recognizing the fast flow and, and playing his assignment. And now all of a sudden, a two-minute clock, you know, talked about that pace being an ally. Tackle play in the backfield like that. East Carolina looks like they're, they're giving up here at the end of the half. They got the first down at least. Milk some clock. Yeah, it kept the Knights from getting the ball back at least. Hard, more pressure, lost it down the middle of the field. Hardy's there and he makes the catch. So now they've got a chance to heave it to the end zone. Now Cardin's saying clock it, but they could use a timeout here. They chose, they might want to save it to see if they could get a field goal attempt off as Cardin spikes the ball. Only took two seconds after the 30 yard pickup. I, 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 I thought that was going to be picked. I mean, he threw it off his back foot, just kind of floated it over the middle, but right between the safeties, they let a lot of clock run off there. Now they get the conversion. I think they wanted to milk the clock, but then they make a big play. Still got one timeout. Got to get at least in field goal range now. Let's well, see how they play it. The career long for Warren Harvey, the field goal kicker, is a 54 yarder. Carden. Carden. Now firing over the middle. It's complete and down to the 20. And they use a quick timeout. They need to to stop the clock with three seconds to go in the half. And from here, it'll be a 37 yard field goal attempt. And there is a night injured is Demetrius Anderson. And he's been having a, a pretty good game so far. He's a big reason why UCF's D line has been as dominant as they were. Two straight plays, though, for Shane Carden under duress, having to negotiate the pocket and the pass rush from UCF, keeping his eyes focused downfield and finding a big throw. And here it is again, working to his left, gets flushed out by Niles to his right, not there. Takes Anderson. You see at the very end of that play, it looks like teammate. yeah, a teammate of Anderson's bumped in. You see again the great catch by Grayson climbing the ladder and bringing it down. And Devon Grayson getting him in position to get points before halftime is Anderson, who has been so disruptive in this first half, not putting any weight at all on that right leg. Now just a little bit as he's helped off the field. Keep in mind for East Carolina, the field goal opportunity, but remember they had an extra point blocked, so nothing guaranteed right here. Have to do a good job up front protection. And Harvey's got to make sure he gets a lot of lift in this kick. The ball centered right in the middle of the field. I mean, they couldn't have picked a better place to have that completion to give themselves an opportunity to get some points on the board here going into halftime. Harvey's had a couple of field goals blocked this year. This will be a 37 yard attempt and it will certainly after what has been a sloppy first half for East Carolina in terms of turnovers and penalties would send the Pirates 
to the locker room feeling a lot better about themselves as you have a look at Harvey's numbers. He needs three points for a school record. And we've seen momentum swings. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get you get going a little bit once you get those juices flowing and good things start happening. Sometimes it's hard to slow them down. Remember a lot of self-inflicted wounds too with penalties and all they gotta do is clean some of those up and get some breaks their way and they could be right back in at no time. Makes his field goal and Harvey becomes East Carolina's scoring leader. 37 yards out and it is perfect. A little positive momentum going to the halftime break for the Pirates. UCF with a chance to get a share of the American. Memphis is in the clubhouse already claiming a share of the American championship. Cincinnati can also join them with a victory and UCF 30 minutes away from another conference title. But East Carolina hopes to spoil that in the second half. AT&T brings us inside the headset as we head down to the field with Samantha Ponder. Coach, obviously a big change in momentum there, but not the start any coach hopes for for you tonight. What in your mind was the reason for the penalties? Well, we've been pretty, we've been great, really, uh, Samantha, all for the last three weeks. Uh, a little excited, maybe overzealous, but uh, we've done a good job past two weeks on the penalties, really cut down. We talked about this week how emotional this could be for your quarterback. Some uncharacteristic turnovers. What's your, what's your assessment of what he's been able to do today? Yeah, yeah you know, it, I knew it was going to be an emotional day for him, and uh, I didn't try to suppress the emotion. I'm not. We'll go in here and figure it out and uh, settle down. Sometimes, you know, you, you, I used to try too hard a little bit, but we got to learn to play next play. We've got plenty of time left, and I'm looking forward to the second half. Appreciate your time. Thanks, yes, Coach. Yes, ma'am. Ruffin McNeil, an East Carolina alum, going in to try to get his team straightened out. UCF with a 23-9 lead at the break. Time now to join Mark May, Brian Greasy, and Scott Van Pelt for the Jaguar Halftime Report. For young people, education can be a guiding light through any circumstance, providing a path to achieve their dreams. That's why the Florida Lottery proudly supports the Bright Futures Scholarship Program, helping over 800,000 students attend college. And we want to continue creating brighter tomorrows. So if you're a Bright Futures Scholar or Florida educator, visit flalottery.com slash brightfutures to tell us how we can help you shine even further. You're watching Night's Rewatch, presented by Dex Imaging. Do business better. Now back to UCF football. ESPN College Football Primetime, presented by Jimmy John's. Thursday night in the American, and this is the American Conference on ESPN. Just about set to start the second half from Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, Greenville, North Carolina, where... UCF leads ECU 23 to 9. The Knights looking for a share of the American crown and they kept ECU from running it at all known as a passing team but the Pirates had a pretty good rushing attack this season but not so much here. How about the coaching adjustments brought to you by Home Depot? Well good offense versus good defense and right now defense is winning the day and I think UCF has been dominant up front on the defensive line whether it's been stopping the run getting penetration they already have two sacks. They've also forced two turnovers, and that's been key for this offense and their ability to generate and score points. This offense, obviously, number one in the conference versus the number one defense. They've had some success throwing the football, but those two turnovers can't give those plays away. Set UCF up in, a, in good territory several times. The Pirates got a field goal right before halftime to generate a little positive thought as they headed to the locker room in East Carolina. will get the ball to start the second half. Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, Samantha Ponder, and our entire Thursday night crew. Glad to have you with us in our final Thursday night of the regular season. Conference championship at stake for the men in white as they try to go back to back for the first time in program history in terms of winning conference championship. Second half is underway. Isaiah Jones. Jones looking for some running room and he finds some and gets up across the 30 yard line and that is where Shane Carden and the Pirates will put it into play after a good return from the sophomore receiver from Austin, Texas. 
So UCF took advantage of a lot of East Carolina mistakes in that first half. What do you want to see from the Pirates with his first offensive possession? I think quarterback Shane Carden, guys, is going to have to continue having success throwing downfield under duress. That's something he did in the end in that two-minute situation. We saw a lot of quick passes early. He's going to have to be good working the pocket with guys in his face. How about some help? I mean, the rushing game, they got negative one yards rushing at the half. Somebody's going to have to make some plays for him in the running game. A completion, a missed tackle, and Jones, who had a good kickoff return, has the first reception of the second half. And East Carolina picks up the first down. Gain of 10 on the first play. They will go to the ground. And still not much doing, and we have a flag, and that didn't take long. Penalties were a problem. It's the 10th first now. half. Yeah. Tenth on East Carolina. The second penalty. Penalty. First it's the second holding call on the center, Taylor Hudson, too. UCF has been quicker. They've been more physical. They are living in East Carolina's backfield right now, making these third downs very, very difficult to convert. It's making it hard for East Carolina to stay on the field. I saw Demetrius Anderson go off with an injury from his defensive tackle position. Jemias Pittman's in there for him now. Shovel pass to try to negate some of that pass rush, and Breon Allen gets up to about the original line of scrimmage, and maybe one more before he's stopped by Brandon Alexander. And Breon Allen is very explosive, so if you're not having success handing it off to him, get creative, find a shovel pass up front of that play. You see the offensive line, Gerald Mamea got pancaked right up front. That's the first time we've seen East Carolina win up front like that. Allen. Stuck his foot in the ground, got a cut, and gets into UCF territory just across the 50. And just like Reese said, the most important thing is it slows down the pass rush. The pass rush has been getting home on card, making him feel very uncomfortable. Slow that puppy down by running those screens, running those draws, those shovel passes. Defensive linemen have to think about it for a second before they go into the quarterback. Yeah, at least the Pirates are into positive numbers running the ball now. A couple of carries from Allen on third down. Sacked again. More pressure from the defensive front and getting up there. I'll tell you what, Mamea didn't get pancaked that time. He just pancaked Cardin instead. And UCF doesn't like to blitz very often. We talked about them being a bend, don't break defense. And they're going to kind of bring action this way. And here's the matchup right over the ball. The center one on one. He just splits the double team, gets into the backfield. It has to be better than that. Cardin's been really good all year. You've got Justin Hardy and some playmakers outside, but if you can't get Mamea blocked better than that, then you've got no shot getting back in this game. East Carolina will punt it away when we saw UCF earlier this season. Coaches were just talking about the natural strength from Gerald Mamea, the fifth-year senior from American Samoa, and he made a big play, and Knights will have the ball back after East Carolina's first possession. Saturday afternoon football presented by K Jewelers. Iowa State had a miserable season. They finish it going to number three TCU at noon. Now TCU is going to win the game, but, oh, but they're going to win the game. It's hey, like, we it's, said like about, field, it's like field we goal said, kickers. We said that about Oklahoma State versus Iowa State a couple years ago too. And remember that game? That's true, but that was a that was a bowl eligible Iowa State team, well, if I recall. But you saw TCU struggle against Kansas, Kansas just a few weeks on the ago. road. Baylor almost <laughs> lost to Texas Tech. All of it. <laughs> Baylor almost <laughs> lost to Texas Tech this past weekend. The okay, answer, that would now okay. That you don't one have an answer for that one. I don't have an answer for that one. Okay, <laughs> but if as scripted, if TCU does beat Iowa State, which only has a couple of wins this year, and Baylor beats Kansas State, convincingly or otherwise, I know they won't just stack up those two teams, but how would you order them? Who would come first in your order, Baylor or TCU? I would put Baylor ahead of TCU. I mean, head-to-head -head has to matter. And when you look at resumes, Jesse, if you talk about them being very similar, Baylor beat the, the top five team in the country. TCU didn't. So, got to give the nod to Baylor. What a grab what a with the grab. hands. Look at the catch from Josh Reese from the fastball from Justin Holman. Guys, you know, I went back and watched TCU play Baylor. I went back and watched the game. If you take a look at the bracket, the way it stands right now, in my opinion, you know, forget head-to-head, -head, forget non-conference, whatever, and who deserves it. In my opinion, watching that film, I came away thinking Baylor was the better football team. Just watching the game back and watching offense, defense, special teams, the quarterback play, if Baylor wins this weekend, I expect them to be ranked ahead of TCU. Holman's going to 
take off. Justin gets across the 40. A couple of yards short of the first down. And, and the one thing that I'm very curious to see, and I don't think it's outside the realm if the committee sticks to what they've been doing, what if Baylor jumps Florida State? Because if Florida State struggles again with Georgia Tech, I, I don't, I'm not saying it should happen, and I don't think it should, but the committee's done it now. They've jumped Alabama over them. They've jumped Oregon over them with the one loss. Now Baylor, you know, ends up being a conference champion, looks good. TCU's already ahead of them. Do they move both those teams ahead of FSU? Stand back, gets across the 45. I think that there is next to zero chance of that happening. Jeff Long said on the college football playoff top 25 show that he did, I mean, look, they don't guarantee and they don't project, but said they felt, I think the word he used, they felt secure with Florida State's resume. The question I'd ask him was, is this the floor for Florida State? And he certainly wouldn't commit to that. I can't envision a scenario in which the Seminoles win the ACC championship and are somehow not. jumped over and left out of the top. I could not. They shouldn't be. That doesn't mean they won't be. I don't, I don't think TCU should be ahead of them. I, I agree with that. I think you can make a case based on strength of record, strength of schedule, and so forth for Oregon or Alabama ahead of them. I think it's much harder to make the case for TCU. Yeah. Right now, yeah. Justin Holman's dealing. As we're talking about the college football playoff, yeah, Holman's completed kind of, nine in a row. He's like Bud. Take a look at me right now, <laughs> spinning the bean. And stand back with a nifty move in the backfield. Picks up the first down. You know, I think the more success UCF has throwing, especially on early downs, kind of softening up this East Carolina defense. All of a sudden, we're seeing less players in the box, and it's easier to run. We talked about this offensive line needing to be physical, needing to wear guys down like Big 54 Terry Williams. William Stanback's been doing a good job tonight running north-south. Play action. Holman complete. Perriman on the grab. And Justin Holman, this is really good play action. Watch his body language as he turns around to hand this off. He ducks the head, really selling that play fake, trying to get linebackers to suck up. And again, success throwing on first down. There he looks for his big play receiver, Brashad Perryman. Not a perfect throw, but a nice job by 11 coming back and making the catch. Seven plays, 57 yards in their first possession of the second half. UCF threatening you to go up huge. I was diagnosed with stage 3C inflammatory breast cancer. I started reading about it, and it was extremely scary because my husband and I just had a baby. My doctor at Florida Cancer Specialists was wonderful with everything. He knew that I didn't have that time, that I needed to be taken care of right away. Now I get to look forward to the future, and it gives me a lot of hope that I'm going to be there to watch my daughter grow up. You'll find out who's in college football playoff selection show presented by AT&T, 1230 Eastern time, Sunday on ESPN. You won't want to miss that to find out who's in the first ever college football playoff. Terry Williams here to swallow up, stand back. We talked about the key matchup being Terry Williams at nose guard and his battle one-on-one -on -one right in the middle of the field. This is, again, a very athletic 353 pounder. You guys know he showed up here as a linebacker, 250 pounds. It just kind of ate his way there. But, you know, they clocked him in the 40-yard dash. They got him at 5'2", at 353. And he's not 353. No, he's He's not. heavier. I mean, his athleticism for a big guy right. is off really the charts. Good. And that's why a lot of NFL scouts have been here this season to watch him play. Holman gets down to the 20. It'll be third down and long. Was that a design quarterback draw? I couldn't tell at it, first. It looked, it looked like he just said, yeah, yeah. you know what? Yep. Not there. Didn't Number one, it. not Let's there. Bye-bye. But see, again, it, you know, he's been more decisive in the second half of the season. And that's helped keep third downs in manageable situations. Now, here, here's a situation now. Got to be smart with your decision-making. Third and long. Can't take a sack. Can't take yourself out of field goal range. I'd look for 11 if I were him. Looking the other way, finds Rennell Hall underneath. He'll be stopped short of the first down at about the 14-yard line. But fourth down and about three. It's just a smart decision by him, though. And you know, and you can sit back there in the pocket for eight seconds trying to find the home run and risk bad things happening. Take the completion, 
take the profit. You're not going to get the first down, but you're making life a lot easier on Sean Moffitt, your kicker. Oh, Moffitt will attempt a field goal from 31 yards out. He's three out of four tonight. Moffitt right down the middle, and the lead is stretched back to 17 and three possessions. Halfway through the third quarter almost, and UCF's up. UCF, our Knights. Since 1970, UCF student athletes have represented Orlando with pride. Today, Masson Sandwiches honors them with a Knights sandwich. Your choice of roast beef, turkey, or chicken with sauteed peppers, onions, and melted Swiss cheese. Three delicious combinations, one awesome sandwich. And for every Knights sandwich sold, Masson Sandwiches will donate $1 to UCF Athletics. Come to the taste. Come to Masson. Famous sandwiches. Anytime breakfast. Serious coffee. Here at East Carolina, they housed and recovered shipwrecked items from Blackbeard the Pirate's last known ship, the Queen Anne's Revenge. It sank off the North Carolina coast in 1718. Recovered more than 300,000 artifacts, perfect for a school that flies the Jolly Roger and at the start of the fourth quarter will raise the no quarter flag. I believe that is Petey the Pirate. 26-9, UCF has the lead on the Pirates. Short line drive kickoff, fielded by the upback, and turned out to about the 35-yard line. Celebrating his 10th year, sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets, Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. Since 2005, Allstate has contributed more than $3.7 million in scholarship funds. Sean Moffitt has kicked through four of those babies tonight for UCF. And they have a 17 point lead as Shane Carden on his senior night tries to get this pirate offense going. Lifted out to the back, and not much is working. Marquez Grayson knocked down by Jordan Ozerites. Yeah, and Jared, George, sorry, Jordan Ozerites just did a great job in recognition on this play. You're going to see his eyes are in the backfield, playing in that zone coverage. He sees the screen. He gets to the ball carrier before the blocking can get out in front of him. A loss of seven. Quick toss is bobbled. And Allen finds a little bit of running room. Third down coming up. And this defense, we talked about it being a bend but don't break defense. Fourth in the country in yards per game. This is right in their wheelhouse. This is what they want. They want you to dink and dunk, slow. They're going to make you earn everything, make you put drives together. Carden needs a third down conversion. He fires complete, and he'll have the third down conversion. Cam Worthy making the grab. These receivers are so well coached at coming back to the football, and that was a really good job by Worthy at the top and stem of his route, turning around and fighting back to the ball, getting separation for that first down. Incomplete. Looking for Jones, it'll be second down and ten. We haven't called the NCAA leader in receptions name in a long time. They got to find a way to get Justin Hardy the ball. He's going to win. I mean, you just got to look his way. He's not getting any special treatment. They're not double teaming him. Well, Harden's got to start looking his way a little bit more. They try to move him around. I mean, we see him in the slot a lot, but then they also will isolate him to the other side of the field. The problem is, against all these zone defenses, there's guys inside and out. And this is another problem, too. There have been a lot of white jerseys right in Carden's face before he can get through any progression. You know, and, and that's why, to me, his numbers are outrageous, uh, considering how bad the pass protection's been all year. I mean, this is a guy that is very well going to win the Conference Player of the Year award. Unbelievable statistics, but when you consider how poor the pass protection has not just been tonight, it's been all year. The success he's had, he's had to negotiate a lot. It makes his, his season that much more impressive. And he's not the greatest athlete, but he understands where to go with the football and how to get it out of his hands. He gets rid of it. This time it goes through the hands of his intended target. You won't see that, that very often. Oh. That was Hardy. They did target him. and. That's a catch Justin will tell you should have made. And it's right at the sticks. Perfect distance, perfect route. You want to run that. You see it's, four, it's third down and 10. It's the 10 yards. He catches that 99% of the time. He's made 
a lot harder catches look easier than that. And that's a play they have to make, and man. He knows it's it. A, he's tapping himself down. on the chest. He knows it. Down 17. You can't afford to miss those. Sometimes that's an indication of a little bit of frustration. Keep pressing a little bit. Bearcats called for and made by Josh Reese. UCF with a 26-9 lead and the ball as we're getting late in the third quarter. At Wendy's, we got you with open drive throughs and delivery. So get a biggie bag loaded with a bacon double stack and all this for just five bucks. It's a big deal at a small price. Drive through Wendy's or get one delivered today. We encourage you to help us in the fight against cancer. The Foundation's awarded more than $115 million in cancer research grants. CF has the ball back and completion from Pullman to Rennell Hall for the first down. As you mentioned earlier in the night, as this is part of Jimmy V Week on ESPN. Cancer's touched so many people, including the East Carolina football family. And that's Jeff Charles, who about a year ago was diagnosed with stage three colon cancer. Went to the emergency room last December. He had three surgeries in less than two weeks. Got right back behind the mic to call the games for his beloved Pirates as quickly as he could. And we're glad to see Jeff back. And I'm sure he's not enjoying the game. And stand back races down the sideline for UCF. But it's great to see Jeff back here and on the call. Certainly our best to him as he continues in his recovery and a terrific run from William Stanback. UCF's best running play all year has been the outside zone. And getting these offensive linemen up into the second level and trying to create a crease. There's William Stanback, an good explosive to have him back play, too, no doubt. Ripped off 41 on that one as we head toward the five minute mark of the third quarter. Never want to give up on anything when you have as many offensive weapons as East Carolina does, but a touchdown would feel a lot like a knockout punch here. So the defense needs to rise up for the Pirates if they can. Stand back slips. You know what the defense needs, Reese, is a turnover. And, you know, they weren't very good at that at the beginning of the year. First eight games, they only had eight turnovers. In their last three, they've now had seven. They need something to go their way. They need to be opportunistic, and whether it's ripping a football out in a run play or jumping in front of a throw, batting one down, just to kind of create some momentum to get the football back to Shane Card. Those two turnovers you saw for East Carolina came on consecutive offensive snaps. A fumble by Carden and an interception thrown. Michael Reed has returned at running back for UCF. He started the game tonight. Standback is coming off injury. Holman fires low to the outside. Did Reese get his hands under it? He did. He does that every game. Josh Reese has really good hands, and that's not easy th playing for Justin Holman. These footballs are coming in live. See there, he kind of gets underneath it. The ball's allowed to touch the ground so long as he has complete and continuous control of it, which I think happened on that case. Nice catch, number 19. How about Holman? 16 to 20. Deal. Spinning it, throwing it deep, short. That strong arm. I mean, he's, he's impressive. Third down and five. East Carolina showing pressure. Holman gets rid of it on the slant. A little too hot for Anel Hall. He also had company and well covered by Montese Overton. And it's no such thing as too hot third in that distance. <laughs> when you're running a slant, I mean, he's got to get the football and put it in a place where only his guy can make the catch. This is a good throw by Holman. So be, to be technical, what I said was too hot to handle. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll tell you what, we haven't called Overton's name very much either for ECU. He's a good player, plays man coverage, and come off the edge, rush the passer. He needs to make some more plays. He's been a Versatile playmaker for him this year. That ended a streak of 13 straight completions, and that means Sean Moffitt will go for his fifth field goal of the night, but instead he will get his second miss of the evening. So Ruffin McNeil's team hanging around. Defense needed a stop. They came up with one. Let's see if they can mount an offensive threat. Second time I think Moffitt's missed to the left. Am I right? How did I just say that? He missed to the left and my right. It's right. Tuck you are correct. Yeah, okay. he, he, he hit the crossbar on the right side. Yeah. And that was Bounced good, though. In. Yeah. So it's a missed opportunity for UCF. Their offense has had a lot of success moving the football. But they've struggled down there. Right. And so now, and eventually now, East Carolina, they got to wake up. With all the playmakers they have, they've got to find a way. Up front, they need to do a better job. They've got to give Cardin time. And these playmakers now on the perimeter of the field. No more drop passes. You've got to play lights out. 
Third offense in the nation in total yards, 300 yards below that tonight. Now is going to be intercepted after the deflection. Jacoby Glenn with his seventh interception of the season. Brandon Alexander probably should have had the pick, but Glenn was there to grab it, and it's the third turnover of the night for Carden. And it's the same story. He didn't have a chance to set his feet and put his weight mm -hmm. into it. He's back in the back, and you see penetration gets right in his lap. And watch his feet, Jess. Yeah, it's, it's hard. He's trying to step into in a throw right yeah. there. And the pressure pushes it back, and then the tip drill. Yeah, Brandon Alexander should have caught that. No, he just wanted to get a little <laughs> Give it to his assist. boy. <laughs> Glenn, you know what, Glenn, Glenn you've, been, you've had some great seven. coverage this year. You've already got six picks this year. And, you know, and, and, but what can you say about UCF's defense all night long? And, you know, they have the numbers coming in, but you've got to see them against good offenses back it up. And these Carolina guys, they've been one of the best on offense all season long. Michael Reed has a short game. Another guy who gets an assist on that interception was Mamea. He was yeah. the one who roller skated his guy right back into Cardin's mustache. We it's called been a it, rough night. We called Mamea's name a lot tonight. He's been dominating up front. That whole defensive line has making life very difficult on Cardin and this offense. Seven interceptions. That's sixth best in the country. Jacoby Glenn, redshirt sophomore from Pritchard, Alabama. Holman going deep. Reese is out there. He's tangled up with Hawkins. And they're taking shots on Hawkins. That, that's the guy that everybody does. We keep saying it. And Hawkins on that on that play fell down on the ground. He was lucky this throw was overthrown. You see, he's kind of grabbing his arm, tangled up a little bit. That ball's just a little bit better thrown. That's a walk-in score for Josh Reese. Hey. Josh Hawkins, nice coverage on that play. You can say that, Jesse. That was pretty good coverage. You're picking on him, but that, he was step for step with him. Man. Better throw. That's a walk-in score. Well, he can say that on every play. <laughs> no defense for a perfect throw? Nope. He kept the arm inside, made it a little tough for Josh to run down there. Third and nine, Holman throwing. Oh, he's got Perriman, oh. and he flat dropped it in that. Would have been an opportunity for that Rashad was Perriman to speed. score. We talk, <laughs> wow. we talk about NFL caliber throws. He has arm talent that 99% of other college defense. players don't have. 15 yard penalty. Automatic, automatic first down. They're going to get away with it because there was another 15 yard penalty against East Carolina. So UCF will keep the ball. He had the matchup he wanted outside going to Brashad Perryman. I mean, that throw was an absolute <laughs> laser. No air. <laughs> <laughs> that got 30 yards down the field. Watch this throw. I mean, <laughs> I mean that's supposed to be caught by Perriman, but I mean, better have both hands ready. 95% of the starting quarterbacks in the NFL don't make throws like that. Back to the ground. Stand back. Slips a couple of tackles and gets into ECU territory. Here's another look at the throw from Holman. This is better angle. Oh, man. Oh. And the fact that, you know, the decision, but the fact that the ball came out as early as it did, his boys are trying to explain to him, dude, I don't, I don't blame you. <laughs> Your hands were right. You know, they call, they call him Nolan for Nolan Ryan because he puts so much heat on his, he throws his fastball all the time. You see 84 there, Justin Tukes going to line up. He said he's heard the ball whistling more this season from Holman than he ever did from Blake Bortles. That's not to cast dispersions at Bortles. It's just to <laughs> emphasize how hard Holman throws the football. And Bortles isn't upset. He was he was a he was a top five no, pick. He's fine. He's, he's, he's fine good. with that. Yeah. He's, he's happy. Good. But it just shows you what kind of talent he has. Pro style offense. He's got some good receivers on the outside. They got the running game working. This offense and they've had the running game working this year. It's been really hard to stop. Uh, third down's been a little bit of a problem tonight for UCF, particularly when they've gotten in the red zone or close to it. To the outside, and this time Holman had a man open in Rennell Hall, but he overthrew him, so it'll be fourth down. It's great to have a strong arm. The one thing Holman does need to improve, though, is touch. And this is a throw that he can afford to take a little bit off. This doesn't have to be a line drive. He's gotten behind the defense. You just kind of lay that one over, let him make the, an easy catch stay on the field. Justin Hardy back to return the punt. Hardy would love to make a play senior night. 
Takes it at his five. Not this time. 114 remaining in the third quarter. East Carolina, 13th in the country, scoring nearly 38 points per game. They've been held to nine through nearly three quarters. Quick toss that we've seen a few times out to the right side. That's a good pickup from Scott. At Georgia Tech, when they take on Florida State, a unique rushing attack. Yeah, the triple option, it's, as a defensive guy, it's just miserable. It's three yards, it's three yards, it's five yards, big plays. Multiple things to defend on every single play. George O'Leary's old school. O'Leary, the former coach of Tech. It's Mark West Grayson is knocked out of bounds. And one thing, David, as a defensive lineman, the Florida State will have to get ready to do is deal with cut blocks. Cut blocks, legal, chop blocks, not cut part of the option. Yeah, no, and it's every single play. You know, cutting your knees out from underneath you, you better get your hands down and your feet back so you don't get that chop. But another thing it does, too, is all the possessions it takes away from you by eating the clock because of the great run game. Harden with Ozerites all over Hardy, put it right on him. It'll be a first down and, for the Pirates. And atoning for that last drop on the critical third down. And again, over the middle of the field, whether it's from the slot or whether it's isolated outside, really, really strong hands when passes like that get contested. Harden ran right into the pressure, and it was Miles Pace that has him. And all night long, I think UCF's done a good job taking away Shane Carden's first read. How many times have we Shane seen Carden have to clutch the ball and try and reset? He wants to work to his right over here outside. It's not there. UCF playing in a big zone. He's got to reset. And there's Miles Pace just doing a good job staying home, keeping contain, and getting the sack. I think that's now the third for this UCF defense. Headed toward the fourth quarter, UCF trying to get a share of the American Championship. And we'll rise up, I like the waves, we'll rise up, in spite of the ache, we'll rise up, and we'll do it a thousand times again. You, 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 you. Starting the fourth quarter at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, Greenville, North Carolina, Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, David Pollock, and Samantha Ponder, now our entire Thursday night crew. Glad to have you with us. This is Carolina open for a fourth quarter rally. Shane Carden across the middle complete on a second down and 20. Justin Hardy made the catch. Tempo has to go way up for East Carolina. They've got to play as fast as they've played all game here in the fourth quarter now. Trying to get as many snaps as they can in. They can get back in this game. This is a third down play, by the way. Third down and five. Carden throwing. A terrific grab by Hardy. That's Now that's the kind of form you expect to see from the guy who has more catches than anybody else in FBS history. Talks about the wide receivers. We're going to have to start helping him out. Making the tough catches. It's about nice. as tough as it gets right yeah. there. So first down on that play. East Carolina had a field goal right before halftime. They mustered nothing in the third quarter. Defensive line dominance from the Knights. And this is the quarter that East Carolina really shines in. All year long, they've outscored their opponents by 73 points in this quarter. It's second best in the country. So, you know, this is where, you know, the execution level just has to go way up. And what, what really helps that is the tempo. Rian Allen in the backfield. He's been particularly good at home in the fourth quarter, outscoring opponents 34 to three. And they'll need a big fourth quarter here to pull this one out of the fire. Carden buys a little more time, and buys a little bit more. Gets away from Thomas Niles. Now he's directing traffic. Harden staying in bounds. Got all kinds of time. And he completes it to Isaiah Jones. And Jones is inside the 40. What a play by Carden to keep it alive. And there's been pressure in his face all night. Hadn't been able to set his feet that time. He bought his own time scrambling around. But look, nobody opened at the beginning. He's trying to find a guy. Scrambles around. And how about this? How about the poise right here? He's not running, he's just chilling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. 
Good job on the scramble drill by receivers too. UCF, after that play, decided to need to time out 26-9, Knights lead. At Papa John's, we want you to know that from our 450 degree oven to box to you, it's our policy that your pizza is never touched once it comes out of the oven. And we're taking extra steps like no contact delivery to ensure it. How about the work Isaiah Jones did here? Yeah, we mentioned how well coached these wide receivers are. We talked about them coming back to the ball in the scramble drill. Your quarterback's rolling to the right, so you work to the right. Now you've got to work down the boundary to give them a target. Donnie Kirkpatrick and Dave Nickel, the two receiver coaches for East Carolina, do an excellent job with this group of wide receivers. So the first down after the big play from Carden and Jones, and now Carden throws it down the middle row. They're going down to get it. It was Grayson, but there is a flag down. Carden finally had protection. It's one of the few times he could sit back there and set his feet. Let's see what the call is. Hold it. Mm. Number 38 of the defense. Now he's declined. The result of the play is a first down. Well, this is a tremendous route, an interesting route concept by East Carolina. On the outside, they're going to clear the middle of the field with this route here. And you're going to see here a double move. He stops and then comes in the middle, the center, where everything's wide open. Consecutive 22-yard gains. And now Carden is throwing to the end zone. And going up the end and scoring is Cam Worthy. Touchdown, East Carolina. Shane Carden, we've talked about. This is what we've seen from this ECU offense. Look at him. Decisive, puts his foot in the ground, and then throw it up. Let Cam Worley, your six foot three receiver, go up and make plays. And these receivers have done this all year long. That's not a surprise. Surprise it's taken this long for it to happen well, in this game. Cam Worthy is their deep threat. He's been their best in the second half of the season. They just haven't had time to get these throws thrown downfield. 10 play, 90 yard scoring drive as Carton goes over 300 yards for the night. His 26th touchdown pass and gives Cam Worthy a chance to make a play, and he proves more than worthy in the Pirates trying to hang around. Hi, I'm Danny White with UCF Athletics. We want you to show your UCF pride with the new UCF plate. Please ask for the new UCF license plate at your county tax collector's office and night your ride. Cam Worthy making a touchdown grab for East Carolina, and we've had a season full of fourth quarter finishes on Thursday night, and maybe Shane Carden's going to deliver another tight finish. He was 7-for-7 seven seven for 96 yards in the 15-yard touchdown pass on that last scoring drive for East Carolina, and the Pirates have closed within 10. Now what answer do the Knights and Justin Holman have? Things at stake. It's senior night for East Carolina. They have to win this in their bowl game to have a 10-win season. It would be the first time in program history they had consecutive 10-win seasons. The Knights are hoping for back-to-back -back conference championships. Jordan Aikens, after the bobble, picks it up. There is a flag down, a couple of them, in fact. You see up trying to get his share of the American title. He won it last year, went to the Fiesta Bowl and beat Baylor. There's multiple fouls by the receiving team, holding number 21, this penalty's declined. Legal block in the back, number 17. This penalty's half the distance of the goal line, first down. Kind of now UCF is backed up. They'll start this drive at their own six yard line. to the outside and a little breathing room out across the 10. I think it's critical UCF is able to run the football. We talked about the challenge the offensive line had, having to be physical against a bigger front from East Carolina. UCF's averaged five and a half yards a carry tonight, but in this game now, up 10, momentum back on East Carolina's side. Deep in your own end, you have to be able to run the ball 
and milk the clock and get that guy, big 54, Terry Williams blocked. Stand back, tripped up, short of the first down, big third down coming for UCF. But the momentum could swing to East Carolina if they could get a three and out here. Defense hadn't been great all night, but you gotta find something, some kind of momentum, change it to go back your way. I think Terry Williams on the inside. On that last play got double teamed. They got a third and short. They got to commit some guys. Is Central Florida going to throw the football too? That's what you got to watch out for too. They will. Holman batted down. A three and out. Zeke Bigger. Got the mitts on it and swatted it away. And a lot of time to go here. And a lot of fans have left. It was a great job by Bigger. The fans have left, but this game ain't over, Reese. And no doubt about it. Watch him come right here from the right side. And watch him stop, set up shop, and realize that the, the ball's coming out fast. This UCF offense is a quick passing game offense. A lot of times, Holman's getting the ball out of his hands. Great job by Bigger. Caleb Houston. It's off a good punt. It's going to drive Hardy to the 40. Has a little room. Nice through a couple of defenders. And ECU will start in UCF territory after the good return from the star receiver Justin Hardy, a 45-yard punt, a 14-yard return. And East Carolina has a chance to get it back to a one-possession game. You see the defense is starting to feel it, starting to get some confidence there on the sideline. The other thing, guys, not only is East Carolina executed better on offense, but as a team, they're playing smarter. Remember they had nine penalties in the first half? Yep. Only two here in the second half so far. They've gotten out of their own way. Rush yardage hurt by the sack totals, and oh, that oh. was wow. almost intercepted by Jacoby Glenn. It would have been his second pick off a deflection tonight, and he let it slip through his hands. And seven interceptions on the year. Well, this is a quick throw from Carden here in the backfield. He's trying to go, just work outside. He gets, gets his feet set. That throw is high. That should have been intercepted. Accepted. That should have been the eighth pick for Jacoby Glenn this season. East Carolina, Ken Cardin now take advantage of getting away with a throw. Right back to work. Down the middle. It's complete. Looking for running room and then just deciding to get the first down is Hardy. Just another great example. Fighting back to the football. The top of the route. Watch him put his foot in the ground. Come right back now. That's really, really good. Hardy over 100 yards receiving tonight. Carden has a little running room. He'll pick up what he can and then step out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. Good smart play by the East Carolina quarterback. And this is great for ECU's offense because now they're starting to play their game. This is the tempo game that they want to play with everybody. Do a great job of wearing folks out. Now when their defense gets stops, now they can put some offense together. So UCF doesn't play a lot of guys on that defensive front. Now you can wear them out a little bit. Carden quarterback draw. Carden has the first down. He's inside the 20, and Shane Carden's inside the 15. First and 10 for the Pirates. It's a great play call. They got everybody to vacate the center of the field with routes. You're going to see a running back go out this way. It takes the linebacker out that way. There's no one in the middle of the field to tackle a quarterback Carden. And how about... How about the coaches coming back to him? He carried the ball one time on a quarterback draw in the first half. He coughed it up and fumbled it. And called it again. Now throw it to the end zone. Wide open, man. It's a touchdown for East Carolina. Marquez Grayson. Tremendous play call by offensive coordinator Lincoln Riley. They're going to fake the wide receiver screen outside. Take a look up top. And that's our guy, Justin Hardy. The entire defense bites on the FPS all-time crew receptions leader. And running back Marquez Grayson able to sneak out on the wheel. And East Carolina, just like that, right back in the game. Warren Hardy puts through the extra point. And in two minutes, 43 seconds, the Pirates ring up two touchdowns and it wasn't long ago the UCF was threatening to put this game out of reach miss field goal two touchdowns and we got a finish in Greenville
Addition Financial can't help Olivia's mom make a perfect unicorn cake. But for smart financing, money management, and college savings, count us in. The kickoff coming after the most recent touchdown. And see if the Pirates can get another stop. Aiken's driven into his end zone, and he'll take a knee. UCF will start on his 25. Here's the story of the second half. The Knights were driving. A touchdown might have been the knockout punch, but then they missed the field goal, and immediately after that, Shane Carton went to work. Yeah, Shane Carton's been on fire. These last two drives now, he's 9 for 10 for 120 yards and two touchdowns, and you can't help but wonder about UCF's inefficiency in the red zone, guys. Six trips they've been down there. They've only come away with two touchdowns and not being able to capitalize on those opportunities and all the turnovers and penalties the way they should have has kept Shane Carden in East Carolina around in this game. How good Carden has been in the fourth quarter. Dominant so far for the Pirates, 133 to 9 in yards, and then they're able to stop the run. Zeke Bigger, top 10 in the nation in tackles, and he's in the backfield. It's just amazing how much emotion goes into the game and, and how much it turns around and once some good things start happening for offense, you, you, you get jacked up on defense and you start making plays. And now you can hear this crowd. Now they're starting to get into it. Second down and 11. Holman fires to the outside. He couldn't make the connection with Perriman. It'll be third down. I don't know if Perriman located the football. I don't know if he was expecting Holman to throw it to him, but it didn't look like he was ready to catch that pass. Now you've got third and 11 now. This defense has had success here recently. UCF needs a first down in the worst way. See all that enthusiasm on the sidelines? Ruffin McNeil yesterday talked about the four phases of the game. Offense, defense, special teams, and sideline enthusiasm. They've got plenty of it, and they'll have some more if they can get off the field on third down again. Holman to the outside. He's got Hall out there. Did he make the catch before he got out of bounds? He did, calling it a catch and a first down for O'Leary's team. And there's the example of the Change touch up. by Justin Holman. Remember, he had this throw, the exact same throw earlier. Tried to throw a line drive, didn't get it. Is it a catch? He's got possession. Mm -hmm. He gets both feet down. That would have been good on Sundays. But there's a great throw by the quarterback, Holman. Take a look at it again. Right foot down, left foot down. Great wow. job. And a huge first down conversion for UCF. Get 18 on third and 11, and boy, did the Knights need it. Now stand back. And he hasn't found any quarter from this Pirate defense in the last couple of possessions. Brandon Williams on the tackle. They needed it to rest their defense, get their heads back straight. A lot of times when that offense, these offenses you see all the time, you see, we talked about Baylor and TCU earlier, too, those offenses, they get in a the rhythm. They're hard to stop. Sometimes you go make them sit on the sidelines for a little while, you get them out of that rhythm. They've certainly been in the rhythm the last couple of times they've had it. Jet sweep. Paul, good cut. Paul, across the 45, and there he goes. Oh, and he fumbled the football. On the ground, who's going to come out with it? Bigger has it. ECU recovers the fumble after Dietrich Allen knocked it away. You want to talk about sideline enthusiasm? Now they're going nuts down here. That's just tremendous pursuit and effort by East Carolina's defense. And we talked how they needed a turnover, something they'd been really, really good at in their last three games, and they finally get one here. This play looked like it was destined to be an explosive play for UCF. Allen reaches yeah. around. Punches the ball out. The safety number four. Watch him. Watch him club it right there. Paul almost looked as if something went wrong with his legs or something. I just got he tired. Cramped up or got tired or what happened? But heck of an effort by him. Yeah, though. it was. It was a great run prior to the fumble, and what a time for just the third fumble recovery of the season for East Carolina. Now the little quick toss, and there's some running room outside for East Carolina. Pick up of about nine on first down. And Scott was on the carry. And now they can run the football. They don't have to be one-dimensional. Scoring so quick, it allows them to run that. And they've run that toss play several times tonight. Had a lot of success. Earlier, you're like, hey, they can't even run it anymore. They got to start pitching and catching. And Rennell Hall looks like he's limping a little bit. 
as he did near the end of the run prior before or prior to having the ball knocked free after the pickup of nine by Anthony Scott. Carden back to the ground. This time it's Breon Allen. That's why they need those pitch plays because when they try to run it up the middle of the field, there's been nothing there. They've had to go to the outside and. But May has been doing his Matumbo figure. He's <laughs> not right. here, yeah, brother. Well, he's, he's been winning, but you know, nonetheless, even if he's been under duress, Shane Carden's been very good throwing it in the second half, and these receivers have done well in the scramble drills all night, trying to help out their quarterback. They've looked very, very good now these last two drives. Blitz, Carden hit in the backfield, straining forward, and UCF comes up with a stop. Big defensive play. And we saw him go for it on fourth down in the first half in this exact same spot at the 33. I don't see if see Ruffin it. wants to do it again. No, here oh, comes the punt team now. Hey, this time, well, last time we didn't think they should have done it either, but you got some momentum going on defense. You've got some stops. I think it's the right decision. There's still a lot of time left, and your defense is playing much better than it was. I'll tell you what, that was a huge stop for UCF. After a sudden change situation, you have a turnover to force a three and out like that on an offense that was rolling. That was well done. The fourth ranked defense in the country. You need to rely on them to win a game, and they came through on that possession. Gregory drives Reese inside the 20. Reese, five or six yard return. And UCF will have it back, 6.47 to play. Rocco Scarphone making the tackle on special teams. That's the fumble by Rennell Hall. They gave ECU the ball. Night defense rises up. At Chick-fil-A, we may be about the little things, but for us, community is a big thing. It brings out the best in us all, even in times as uncertain as these. While we can't have the pleasure of serving you in our dining areas, we're still here for you with delivery, drive through and mobile order where possible in compliance with state and local regulations. Order through the Chick-fil-A app or our delivery partners, and we'll see you soon. In the meantime, let's all take good care of each other of awards this season, including the Davey O'Brien National Quarterback Award, Boykin, Marcus Mariota, and Dak Prescott, the finalists, the Home Depot College Football Awards Show, December 11th at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. We got a fourth quarter to finish here. Stanback slips a couple of Pirates, and he's tripped up. Mariota had a whole lot more yards. Zeke Bigger making another play to cut Stanback's feet out from under him. Terry Williams didn't make the tackle, but he makes the play. Right in here, getting a slant right off the nose. You see a quick explosion, beats the center, forces Stan back to have to cut back. How about him still getting two or three yards? Yeah. It's nice having him back, isn't it? No doubt about it. It's nice having him stand back. But this Terry Williams, I mean, we talked about that being a key matchup in the middle of the defense. He's been winning his one-on-one -on -one battles, making it very difficult for UCF to run up the middle. Not running up the middle this time. Man. Nowhere to go. 3.53, agile and quick like a cat. I mean, he's almost not even touched coming out of his stance. You're gonna see him right here again. He just splits it, gets back in the backfield, not making the tackle. I mean, you'd like to come, for that to come up on a stat sheet, but the pursuit in the backside. Well, the problem is when you're that big, you gotta sit down and anchor to block him. But when he's that quick and he can swim over you real quick, you got no shot. Big Terry with eight tackles tonight. And now Justin Holman is looking at a third and long. Holman trying to get a bunch of it. And Rashad Perriman takes a big hit. Trayvon Simmons delivering the hit, and it'll be another punting situation for UCF as they will rely on that defense to try to hang on. Great job, Allen, rerouting him, and he's out of bounds. The hat's out there, so it really wouldn't have, wouldn't have mattered, but. It was a heck of an effort, too, to lay out because he saw he was about to get whacked. He tried to, Pearman still tried to go out and make a play. And Justin Hardy. D comes up big again, Reese. Yes, it does. Now it'll be the UCF defense, but first the punt coverage team that has to take care of Hardy. They do their job. Now what will the night defense do as they try to hang on for five minutes and 14 seconds and claim a share of the American championship? Outside pitch plays to running backs have been the most successful running play 
and then quick throws over the middle of the field, particularly to number two, Justin Hardy. In the middle and the soft spots of these zone coverages and these soft defenses from UCF. That's where East Carolina's had their most success tonight. When we saw UCF earlier this year against BYU, number 41, Terrence Plummer, single-handedly kept them in the game. Gave them an opportunity to win it in overtime. Underneath, a little tunnel screen and slipping and falling is Hardy before Plummer would and get there to make the tackle. Plummer was right there again. He sees things so well, man. Right in the middle of the defense. He read the screen all the way. Takes great pursuit angles. He's a tackling machine. I think if you're UCF, you're happy. Fourth ranked defense in the country. You're liking your chances right now. Got to get another stop. Carden gets pressure, gets rid of it. Plummer on the tackle of Breon Allen, a very short game. Third down and about seven the, coming. The problem is, because it's third and long, do you have the time? Because this pressure, as you just mentioned, getting after Shane Carden, you know, do you move the pocket? He's going to have to do a good job here buying time and finding a throw. It's been so much better at that in the second half. Ooh, that doesn't help. The movement on the left side is Miles Pace. If Miles Pace threatened or if it was a move by the offense. Ball start. Number two of the offense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Initially they got Justin Hardy. It wasn't necessarily the guy lined up on the end of the line of scrimmage. You just talked about protecting your quarterback, and that makes it that much harder now. You know, you got to, you got the receivers have to run down the field and let routes develop more. So now as a defensive lineman, you know, you can get pressure. The interior of the defensive line is eight. You talk about Demetrius Anderson and Mama, both those boys have been destroyed. Mamea, sorry. <laughs> Mamea has been destroyed in inside. Third down and 12 to go with the quarterback draw. Carden going for the first down, and Shane Carden picks it up. How about the senior? In critical junctures all year long, red zone and third down is when they've tried to dial up the quarterback runs. Shane Carden's been very good at that here in the second half as well. Needed 12, got 13. Fresh set of downs. Here's Carden throwing it up. Got a man open. It's complete. It's Allen, and he's out of bounds after picking up a first down. We talked about Justin Holman all night throwing his heater and not using a lot of touch. That was touch right there by Carden. Barely gets it over the defender. Drops it right in there. Scrambling for his life again with the pressure in his face. But they had a defensive end trying to cover the running back out of the backfield, so good decision by Carden. Allen slips a couple of tackles and gets down to the 30. Pick up of about five. You hold your breath every time Allen has the ball. He is explosive, and he's little. He's only 5'8", 190 pounds. He hides behind these tall linemen. They're like trees. When he sees a hole, he just puts his foot in the ground, explodes, tremendous speed. There's playmakers all over the field for these Pirates. And Barry Sanders was Breon's favorite player growing up. He's a little of that footwork. Like his running back idol did, Jacoby Glenn on the stop against Cam Worthy. It's a good group. It's not just Justin Hardy. They've got guys all over the field, outside, good with the football in their hands after the catch. It's a great matchup now against a very experienced UCF secondary. 144 combined starts in the back end of UCF's defense. Very rarely these guys out of position. They can tackle. That's why they don't give up a lot of explosive plays, but. This is probably as good a group of wide receivers top to bottom as they've seen all season long. It's been a good battle all game. The third down and one. That's a quarterback run game again. Run seen. the quarterback again here. I'll let Carden throw it instead. Carden over the middle. It's complete. You know who? Justin Hardy with a grab. First and ten for the Pirates. And Carden showed great patience that time. Thought maybe he'd run it, but he's dancing around back there in the pocket. How about the protection? And then finds number two over the middle, who's been money here in the fourth quarter. Throw it anywhere near him, usually he sticks it. Slowing down the tempo now, getting the right substitution on the field, understanding the field goal ties it, but they'd love to go ahead, get the TD, take the lead. Carden pulled it out, throw to the end zone. Justin Hardy. He is so good over the middle of the field. And it doesn't matter if he lines up in the slot 
or it doesn't matter if they isolate him on the back side of the formation. This is where he does his damage. He's coming from the right side. It's a slow developing play action, trying to freeze the linebackers, stretch them, and create a window. Here's Hardy outside, patient, puts his foot in the ground. He wants the ball. Jumps up in the air, senior night for these two guys. Special career, now they take the lead. An all-time leader in catches in FBS history. Extra point is good. That means UCF needs a touchdown. His final game in Downey Ficklin Stadium, and Justin Hardy has a dozen catches, 140 yards, and the go-ahead touchdown with 2.17 to go. 21 straight for East Carolina as they've taken the lead on UCF. Welcome to ESPN College Football Primetime presented by Jimmy Johns. And in the fourth quarter, East Carolina has scored freaky fast. Shane Carden <laughs> putting up nearly 400 yards tonight. He's completed 16 of his last 17. The revenge of Redbeard, if you will, for the Pirate quarterback. And Carden leads all active quarterbacks in college football. Game-winning fourth quarter drives. Will this be number eight? That'll be up to the Pirate defense. No quarter has been offered by Ruffin McNeil's team in the fourth quarter, but now UCF, its championship hopes on the line, and boy, could they use a good return from Jordan Akins. It will not be Akins. Instead, it will be Easton, and Akins convinces him to take a knee and it'll come out to the 25. Here are the touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Shane Carr has just been on point. And whether it's Cam Worthy outside on a fade route, whether it's faking a screen outside and sneaking in a running back on the wheel, or a slow developing play action pass and finding Justin Hardy for the 27th time of his career, Shane Carr and this offense have come alive in the fourth quarter, and the defense has been a big reason why. Would not show it on that either. It was the third and 13 where he scrambled for the first down, using his legs too, but you're right. The defense has got him back in it by getting stops, getting it back to their offense. Now they need one more. And UCF has two minutes and 17 seconds to save his championship hopes, and they're going to have to go five yards farther after the false start. It's always the best thing about playing in somebody else's building. Or play, playing at home, excuse me, when you're an offensive lineman, they got to hear that crowd, and you get a little bit of an advantage getting off the ball. Dickey got off just a second too fast. And David, you talked about it earlier, the change in momentum and how quickly that can happen. East Carolina seemed lifeless almost through three quarters. Now they're alive and they're chasing Holman and they hit him as he throws and it'll be second and 15. There was a tremendous pass rush coming from the interior of East Carolina's defensive line. There's a spin move from the defensive tackle just on this side here. You see that in just getting Rose. Yeah, Christian Rose. We've seen them dominate at the point. They're able to get a hit on the arm. How do you think that feels getting hit by Terry Williams right there at the end, too? Probably not very good. <laughs> You've been hit by some big dudes. If he lands on top, you're going to feel that one at 360. And Terry's taking a break. Holman back to work. Now the pressure's all over him, and Holman's wrapped up. Second straight time they have falls back there. Interior of the defensive line again. Red Presley also. It's going to come right here. Just too much juice getting into the backfield. That time it's Presley. This entire defensive line for East Carolina, they are, as David Pollock would say, eating. Boy, how quickly this thing has gotten away from UCF. It's not as if they're out of it, but boy, with dire straights they're in all of a sudden, a third and 20, down by four. 
This fella has been dancing all night, but now with a little more gusto as his Pirates have taken the lead. And the big swamp monster, as they call him in the middle, Terry Williams. It is a key matchup, 353 pounds, stopping the run, getting pushed, being physical. And even if it's not him showing up, making the tackles, he's making a lot of the plays. He has. He's made the ball go the other way and cut back to his defenders. But there's one thing consistent about it is he hasn't been blocked, whether it's two guys, one guys, whether it's been his physicalness at the point of attack or his quickness getting around folks. He hadn't made life easy on that offensive line. Talk about this being senior night for 19 different guys for East Carolina. We've seen a big game already from Shane Carden and Justin Hardy. Let's not forget Terry Williams also the last time he's playing here at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. This is a special class to Ruffin McNeil. Coming in when he did as an East Carolina graduate now in his fifth year as the head coach. Justin Holman trying to rally his team. He, he took a pretty good shot, as you see, falls, late. finish Ooh. him off, and then Brandon Williams came in and put the headgear on him. In third and long situation, he's got to throw the football. You know that. Perryman's been his guy. In these situations, he looks for number 11, his big, tall, athletic receiver on the outside at the bottom of the screen. Good protection. Holman. Almost intercepted. UCF will have one more chance. Brandon Williams could have all but put the game away. That's the second time East Carolina has not been able to handle the velocity of what otherwise would have been an easy interception. And Holman here is just staring it down over the middle of the field. You've got a defender, Brandon Williams, who's got very good ball skills as an inside linebacker. Drop the pass, and of course, you've got to go for it now if you're Holman. He just hit two of his last 10, and this, this fourth and 20 play to keep UCF's championship hopes alive in the American Athletic Conference. And my big question is, can Holman have, will he have the time to get rid of this football? We were just talking about that earlier with East Carolina and how poor their pass protection's been third and long situations, but you've seen on this series that UCF has not been able to block East Carolina up front. And you see how important it is and why they were throwing on first down early in the game. This is an offensive line. You talked about it earlier. Nine different starting lineups. When you can run the football and pass on first down, non-obvious passing situations, they were able to hold up and hold their blocks. Now you know everybody, it's a pass. Everybody knows that in the building. And so far on this drive, they haven't held up at all up front in obvious passing situations. So you're expecting a big zone coverage. And like, like David mentioned, I'd be looking for Perryman number 11 working to the middle of the field and trying to find a spot. Here he is down here. Need 20 yards. Holman hit as he throws. He had a man for a second but couldn't connect. And East Carolina gets the stop. Fred Presley was back there applying the heat. And it looks as if Shane Carden is going to go out a winner in his final game at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. And we talked about pressure again. Justin Holman wants to step up and make this throw over the middle, but watch the effort. Running over the center and diving in, hitting him in the leg so he couldn't, couldn't make a big play. And Carden says, I've been taking some hits all night. Thank you, defense. And you've got to give East Carolina credit, guys. There was so much to play for tonight. It's senior night, 19 different seniors, but a chance to beat the defending conference champion and also keep their hopes alive for their first ever back-to-back 10-win -back seasons. For Ruffin McNeil and this senior class and this football team, a tremendous showing here tonight. And you also, you're able to keep UCF from celebrating on your field for getting a share of the title as Ruffin McNeil now 90 seconds away from victory. And we haven't talked about it a lot tonight with the focus on UCF trying to get a share of the title. What about the job Memphis has done to already no get doubt. in the clubhouse? And Justin Fuente has done a great job there. They already have a share of the time. He, he's got to be up for some jobs for the job he's done at Memphis. I mean, you talk about the edge they play with. I remember, I remember watching them play Ole Miss early in the season. You're like, wow. I mean, defensively, offensively turning it around. I mean, Justin Fuentes has done a heck of a job. They're nine and three team. And that is exactly what East Carolina's record is going to be in one minute and 
two seconds. Carter's time. looking comfortable over there, isn't he? Well, we're about to give him we're about to give him some love. Wrangler five-star player of the game is Shane Carden. 36 of 48 for 397 and three touches. He should be the, the American Conference Player of the Year. He was last year's Conference USA Player of the Year, but again, extremely accurate, making quick decisions, and not playing behind the best pass protection this season. He, he's just been dialed in. He's given this offense a spark all season long. A tremendous way for him to end his career here playing at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium. So a minute, two seconds to go. UCF is now out of timeouts. We'll see how much time they can run off with this particular play. Let's see if they'll have to snap it on fourth down. We'll take a pretty long play to do it, and they'll try to get that with Carden running around, trying to buy time. He'll, of course, stay in bounds. And the clock will continue to wind, and we're going to be about 15 seconds left. The difference between the play clock and the game clock, and fourth down's coming. And I think we're going to see Shane run around a little bit more. East Carolina has one timeout left. If they just let the play clock run out and take the penalty if they use that timeout with the second to go on the play clock. And 16 seconds will remain. A fourth and 19. The yardage is negligible. You take care of the football and bleed as much of the clock as you can. But you try to kick a field, field goal, goal here and make it a seven-point game you know, because you're not going to be able to run around for 16 seconds. I mean, UCF's going to get a shot with the ball. And this guy, I guarantee you, on a Hail Mary, he can reach the end zone from a very far point away. So do you scramble around a little bit and throw it up as high as you can? Or do you just try to, you know, or do you just try to convert it? I just wonder right now what, what if East Carolina is comfortable enough trying to kick a field goal. It's definitely not a chip shot. You don't want to risk a block I've, scoop score. Yeah. But, I mean, again, this is, a, this is an interesting decision here. And, and also, the other thing is with Holman's arm, you could you could say run around backwards, but if you don't, you, know, you, you don't want to give them any yardage here. So they're sending the offense back out onto the field. That's why I would have, I, I mean, personally, I would have ran it on third down. I wouldn't have done that little scramble Olay yeah. thing, whatever think, they did. I think what you do here if you're East Carolina, you scramble around as long as you can, throw the ball up in the air as high as you can into the end zone and try and take as much time off and the And out clock. of the back of the end zone, too. Harden, you're trying to get to him. Shane better be careful. Make sure he doesn't so you fumble do, the ball. You now, do see, now see you've Holman lost 10 can, yards. Yeah. It'll be 65 yards from the and, end and zone. Justin Holman can reach that. I mean, I, I'm telling you. Yeah, they would have been uh, maybe – Maybe they were afraid of Carden getting hit as he tried to throw it. Well, East Carolina's had a tremendous pass rush the last couple of snaps. So a big question now for UCF. Could Holman even have the time to get this play off? But he's very, very athletic. You've got to be anticipating Hail Mary here for East Carolina. So defensive ends need to cut the edge off for Holman. But you got some big receivers outside, Perriman being one of them at 6'3 the defense you got to get outside or keep him in the pocket uh, Holman firing to the outside trying to get Reese wow. he caught it got out of bounds five seconds to go and now you got a legitimate shot no at the doubt. end zone. and that's perfect that's exactly what you want take that little route because it's a defense you want to make sure you stay deep and don't give up home run and you got out of bounds so that's with no timeouts in your pocket now defensive ends like you just talked about they got to rush up the field you can't let them scramble around outside the pocket yeah, they're pressing the receivers up here. Well, Holman has time to unload it. He fires it high, he fires Good. it deep. Perriman's out there, and he caught it for the touchdown! He caught it for the touchdown! UCF wins it! Rashad Perriman, 51 yards! Wow. What a 
finish for UCF to give them a share of the American title. I wrote him off, you wrote him off, and a miracle to finish the regular season for UCF. How many Hail Marys have we seen over and over in college football? Guys in position to make plays, and they don't do it. For the record, I did not write them off. <laughs> I, I, I was, did. For the, for the record. I, yeah, I was telling you a moment ago. <laughs> well, by the time they got it back, you did. The clock <laughs> management, I think, for yeah. East Carolina yeah. late was very, very poor. And you've got to give UCF credit. They executed that two-play end-of-game scenario better than anybody could have. Now, look. Does a great job buying the time. He puts that thing up to the moon. Look and he allows his receivers guys. get underneath it. And it's completely un outplayed. Just a bad job by the secondary of East Carolina. Mistiming the jumps. You cannot let a receiver get in behind you. And especially it, a guy that's six foot three that's made as many big plays as, as Perry Manass. And look at Pratt number one come off the goal line. Why would yeah. you come off the goal line? Stay on the goal line. Even if he catches that on the one, you hit him. You gotta jump up and bat that thing down. So, UCF, share of the conference championship, back to back seasons. That went from, that is a nightmare scenario. What do UCF, you UCF, what, what do, do you, you think, think about, about that? that? <laughs> they think they have to try the extra point and a heartbreaking finish for Shane Carden after the great rally. And Perriman with a tremendous play. It was reminiscent, even though it was, it was reminiscent of Jalen Strong's catch for Arizona State against USC, but rather than the defender playing back and waiting on it to fall, they misjudged it going up, and you don't want to risk getting the PAT blocked. So they just take a knee and it's over. UCF goes on the road and goes 65 yards in 10 seconds to win the game 32 to 30. An absolute heartbreaking finish for Ruffin McNeil and the Pirates. And Cardin's had a terrific career. He'll get a chance to play in the bowl game. But Rashad Perriman making this grab. And it's a, a great job of him locating the football and IDing it and avoiding defenders and getting in behind them. And then the toughest part, making the catch, because he had actually jumped first and then actually caught the ball when his feet touched the ground. That was not an easy catch. Unbelievable play by UCF to finish and this And everybody game. that plays football knows, like, it's hard when somebody's there and you're going to tip it to concentrate and focus on the ball, but Perryman... Great job focusing on just the football, none of the chaos that was going around him. What a way to finish our Thursday night season. Big thanks to our entire crew there, the best in the business. Our final score, UCF beats East Carolina 32-30. Sports Center's coming now. Thank you for watching Night's Re-Air. Presented by Dex Imaging, a proud sponsor of UCF Athletics. Dex Imaging is the nation's largest independent provider of office technology with a local touch. Dex Imaging, do business better. And in part by Tico People's Gas, delivering natural gas that helps you save energy. Visit peoplesgas.com. And this UCF football game sponsored in part by Todd Minor Law. Involved in an accident? Get a former insurance company attorney on your side.